You can't watch Manchester United versus Liverpool on the front of a dishwasher. Moonlit musings for sportsman vampires. <laughs> Factory shift workers. Never mind, hello, Chuck. And men with prostate trouble. Morning, Andy. What are you doing? Make sure you stay awake for the radio show that never sucks. The Nosferatu Mics on Talk Sport. Look at the light! Hi ho, hi ho, get Porky off the show. <laughs> a bit of a sort of, you know, cushy. Uh, expense-ridden, bloated, underperforming, indolent and rather inefficient ex-newspaper executive who fell into radio because there was nothing else for you to do. OK, you shut up now. No. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics and I'm delighted to say it's time to say a very good morning to Mr Mike a Porky, a Parry. Very good morning to you, Mr Parry. Yeah, very good morning to you, Mike. We'll get to the result of winners and losers in a minute. Yeah, I yeah. mean, have I worked on say. that one? Have I worked on well, that I'm one? Well, I'm slightly disturbed. Have I had to lobby, you know? Slightly, yeah, but, you eh? know, I thought we agreed we weren't, you weren't going to do any of that. Well, I've got to because I've got to countermand your gerrymandering I don't do anything. All, filth. I, all I do... Gerrymandering no. filth. <laughs> all I do is put the put the vote out, right, oh, no, on no, the no. two mics website. No, I do nothing more. No, no, no. And then I wait for the votes to come in. No, no, no. I have a few... Uh, astonishingly, right, more than 2,000 people have voted. Yes, right. Now, what right. that tells me yeah. is that's more than about 400 extra voters yeah. uh, from most weeks, on yeah. average, right? Which tells me that uh, more, more of these moronic, porky tribe people... Oh, that's have opened nice. Up, ...have opened up fake that's accounts... Nice. I've opened up fake accounts. I've got some evidence right. that I've opened up fake right. accounts. Okay. And I've been voting with fake accounts. Anybody out there who's a talk sport listener who has a particular penchant to listening to my dulcet particular tones, what? you a are. Particular what? Penchant. Penchant. Yeah, for Do listening you mean to my uh, dulcet tones. Penchant. You have just now been branded by old MG, the old rotund one on my left here, <laughs> as a moronic individual. That's how he's insulted you. He's dismissed your intelligence, dismissed your quality as a listener. I think the man's pathetic. And so should you. But don't well, what, stop listening. You know, what, what else would you say to someone? What else I'm would here. you say to someone mm. who was about to vote in a, mm. a referendum, uh, or perhaps in a, a general election, uh, who would vote only because they liked somebody as opposed to what they actually said? Well, you see, well, it's funny you should say that because I was going to talk to you about tall poppy syndrome. Okay, tall poppy syndrome. Do you know what tall poppy syndrome I is? I do indeed. Yeah. Okay. Do you know who's suffering from that at the moment well, in a huge be, way? Well, it can't be you, Maria Sharapova. Oh, really, Maria Sharapova? I mean, the poor lady. Gonna, I was hoping that you what? might row back a little the bit on your support. Lady. For the cheating Russian tennis player. The poor lady has questions to answer about the fact that she has been ingesting a drug which we now know to be on the banned list. Okay. And do you know why she was ingesting it? Uh, but Hang on. No, do you know why? I, I'm not asking why. You know why? I'm, I'm stating the position. No, she of says those that she was, in, she was ingesting it because of her family history of diabetes. That's right, from you know the age the do- of 18. Do you know what the doctors are saying? He's saying there is no, there is no family history of diabetes. No, he's which not is saying a bit that. Of a problem. Well, he's not saying that necessarily. Mm. But what the doctors are saying is mm. that this, this drug does not treat no diabetes. diabetes. Of any kind. Yeah, I know that, yeah. Now, what I'm saying is, that's all very well. We all make mistakes in life. The tall poppy syndrome, what it means is, when you're up there, you know, when you're outstanding, because she's outstanding both in her physical looks... She's standing outside the stadium at the moment. In, she's not allowed in, in. In her ability as an athlete, and her ability as one of the world's great tennis players and great sportswomen, in her ability to have mega-earning power... You can put her in the tall poppy syndrome. Now I've she's had about that... to lose a hundred million pounds. I've had that problem all my life. You've had nothing associated with the word tall I, ever. I... You've never been tall. You've always been tiny. I've had that problem all my life. The bigger they are, the uh, better they fall. No, what's that? What is, what's the expression? The bigger they are, the better they fall. The bigger they are, they are. Hey, the... Hey, the... The... the bigger they are, the, the, the harder fast... they fall. The harder they fall. That's right. I was going to say the faster they fall, but the harder they fall. Yeah. Now I've had. But that... you're not very big though. I have had that problem all my life, you've OK? Had, I'll tell you what you problem you've had all your People life. have looked upon me, standing up there on that hill of mine, what and they said, we're going to bring him down the hill. And that's exactly what, what, hill they're, are you do- that's about? what they're doing. What hill are you talking about? The hill to Jerusalem. <laughs> the hill. And that's what they're doing. Have you had any sleep today? That's what, <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're doing to poor old Maria yeah. Sharapova now. Now, what about all these uh, sponsoring companies that have well, withdrawn their funds? Well, Evian haven't. Evian, the water company. Now, you're a big water drinker. You drink so much water, you're hiding something. <laughs> I think it dilutes yeah. whatever else is in your system, You know, we frankly. had a couple of really good tweets on that last night. Yeah. I, unfortunately, I didn't get to, uh, to, mm. to read them out. 
But, uh, you know, there was one guy who said, well, in say, you know, I'm sitting here at the moment uh, somewhere yes. in Southeast Asia. Yes. There's an old woman drinking a bottle of water. She's obviously hiding something. Well, you never know. You never know. You drink so much water, I'm sure you're diluting something inside your body. But anyway, that's a... That's a the point is, not all like, these sponsors... Uh, not like a certain night editor at Daily Express who used to sit oh. with a, a, a plastic cup on his desk pretending yeah. it was water. It was vodka. But it was actually vodka. It was vodka. Yeah. I'll tell you what happened once. I came back from Russia with uh, one of these... From you know, Russia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By coincidence? Yes, absolutely. Uh, with one of these 70 Three uh, percent bottles of vodka. You oh, know yeah, what I mean? Like potato vodka. Or something. Yeah, somebody had given it to me, and I'd, I'd right. put it in my bag, and somehow got it through British customs or whatever. Somehow. What yeah. do you mean? You smuggled it in? Well, sort of. Yeah. yeah. So I got back to the office, and we're in that new building then on the other south side of uh, Blackfriars yes. Bridge. You know, I had my own office, of course. Not a million and, miles away from here. Uh, not a million miles away from here. In fact, just around the corner. And uh, and within my office, I had a fridge, and the only thing I, I was I've been in that office. Exactly. The only thing. Did I... Did you not have to share it with said man with the glass uh, of? Vodka? Oh, oh no, no, yes, no, 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 I didn't. He thought I had to, but I had to throw him out. Yeah. But anyway, the point is, the only thing I kept in the fridge, of course, was alcoholic beverage. Of course. What, what else would you want a fridge well, for? Exactly. You know, you don't want to keep your milk in there, do no. you? Or your, or your, your butties your for, fish fingers or for lunch or something like that. No. That's right, yeah. So um, so I invited him in, actually. Funny enough, this is the first time... Did you not change the locks and something like that? No, so no, no, in. no, I just, I just barred him. It was no problem, you know. He was, he, he was a man who had scrambled brain syndrome for a lot of his daytime working. But um, You know a lot about that. Yeah, he was the night editor. But anyway, I invited him in at about sort of, oh, I suppose... He used to go into work, didn't he, about sort of lunchtime. I was yeah. him at about three o'clock. You know, I tell, how you doing, son? Sit down. Have a drop of this from you Russia. You have to say his name. You know, he loved it so much, right, that um, despite the fact that I was getting on with other things, mm. he kept nipping back into my mm. office, right, and For raiding... swig. Yeah, raiding the 73% proof vodka. Yeah. And swigging it out. Then he got sort of I'm the boss syndrome. Yeah. So he started taking people in with him. Right. And distributing it liberally, <laughs> you know, with these plastic cups that you're talking about, everybody. And then sitting at my desk and thumping the desk, ah... I had a new policy, a new policy. I want to put adverts on the front page. and all the, It was just nonsense, you know, complete yeah. drivel. Affected badly by the Russians. Y- yes, exactly. So yeah. the Russian vodka nobbled him, in other words. Oh, completely uh, uh, skewed him. Mm. So by the time four o'clock came round, uh, he was completely gone. And, of course, you have to go into evening conference mm. and explain what you're going to do with the paper that yeah. night. He was, he, he was seeing double. He couldn't speak. His tongue was too big for so his he mouth. He stitched him up, He was words. confused. Well, I mean, he, he made a, you know... He, he didn't make a very good performance no. that night. And uh, and when I got back to the office, uh, just after seven, the vodka bottle was empty. But he had to be sent home, Where had you been, then? Sorry? Where had you been? I'd been doing something else. You know, I was important. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, so you've been out drinking. Anyway, getting back to Ms. Well, let's Sharapova. Look at Ms. Sharapova, right? Yes. Let me give you a few facts. Because, okay. as usual, you are sadly lacking them, right? This is what has emerged right. in the last 24 hours. Right. Sharapova said that she used the drug for 10 years. Yes. The manufacturer's recommended course of treatment is four to six weeks. Good God. Right, that's the first thing. Uh, she said that she used the substance for health issues, including early diabetes. Yes. It is not prescribed for diabetes treatment, right? It might be in the her The drug's case. inventor has boasted frequently yeah. of its performance-enhancing properties for athletes. And one key question remains unresolved yeah. over whether Sharapova reported use of meldonium on the medication form when she provided her sample, yes. which is very important. Yes. Because if she didn't think there was a problem, mm. she should have put it down. Yes. Uh, and the drug has been on WADA's list of substances being monitored for the past year. She's had five separate warnings that this was going to be... Uh, I don't understand the warnings form. thing. I don't understand the warnings thing. If somebody warns you, look, don't take that drug, don't yeah. you immediately stop taking it? Well, I would have thought so. Why, why are you so arrogant that you say, I don't care if it's on the ban list, I'm going to keep taking it. You must have a death wish, or you must be stupid, yeah. or... Actually, you didn't get the warning. I, I'm not sure which one of those three it is. Well, the key thing for me, though, is, uh, one, that it, the, the manufacturers boast of its in, enhancement of, uh, of performance and all yeah, that. Yeah, well, as I say, but I secondly, take these beta blockers but, to keep my heart going. Yeah, but your performance is not uh, an athletic one, let's face it. Ah, but I'll tell you something. Mental strength is just as important in the game... <laughs> Sorry, what's your, what's your problem? You actually take something in... from mental strength. I think you might be able to double the dose. <laughs> I should, I should ignore that. Uh, oh, you know, dear. mental strength is as important... You have mental strength. Uh, it's, it's important as when we are mentally jousting in this uh, studio, Indeed. it is just as important to have mental strength out on the court because you are mentally jousting with people like Serena Williams uh-huh. and you have to be at the top of your game. Yeah, but the point is... So, that, for that you know, reason, she may have taken it for, yeah, you know, those purposes. No, but, but she hasn't said that, though. What she said is that yes. she took it because her family doctor told her uh, that it was would help her with her diabetes, right? Well, they should talk to the family doctor then. 
should go and find the family well, doctor. I think you might find that the family doctor won't be found for some I, time. I, I think the family doctor... Yeah, is, is the Russians we're talking is about. He, I was going to say, he's back in eastern Russia, is he? Somewhere towards the Latvian yeah, no, Baltic yeah, nobody type knows uh, where he is. area. Yeah, yeah. funnily enough. Yeah. But we'll talk some more about uh, Ms Sharapova. We'll talk some more about Sunderland as well. Newcastle uh, in the news. What too. about the Arson Banner? And the Arson Banner. We're the going to get to that banner. as well. What did it say? Thanks, Arson. Great while it lasted. Time to say goodbye. Time to say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, mind you, Theo Alcott hit two tonight. That's yeah, rather he, encouraging. I mean, he and Giroud always played well On the well day against, when, you know, against... Roy Hodgson was in this very yeah, but... studio we're sitting in now, talking about strikers to take to um, the Euros yeah. in France. Yeah. And Theo Walcott not, not seen, seen the two time. tonight. Have you seen the time? You worry too much about the time. That's your problem. Yeah. You're a, you're a, you're a clock watcher, you are. <laughs> I've met people like you before. <laughs> Have you? You're all rubbish. You don't remember any of them, though. This is Talk Sport. Listen to kick off with Mark Saggers tonight from seven. Listen, Moosh. This is the biggest deal in weeknight football in Europe. And I'm setting it up with the biggest names. Kick off tonight from seven on Talk Sport. Get it sorted. Right. Uh, the winners and losers result, I suppose, yes. just to get it out of the way. Of Should course. I not? Uh, a lot of people are, are complaining that it seems to have been gerrymandered. Uh, yeah, Roy says like this, you've gerrymandered uh, it. Have an intern go through your followers and block fake accounts. He's making a joke of it. Who? Uh, you. I'm not making a joke yeah. of it. I haven't got any fake accounts. Matt says this. Two minutes into the show, Porky's already sucking up to Sheriff Hover and abusing poor old MG. I don't think so. Uh, Brian says, how can Porky go on about one's physical abilities when they've just been caught cheating? What? Take your blinkers off, Porky. No, I'm saying that you know, there's no excuse for the cheating and all that, but you find that people are revelling in, in poor uh, Miss Sheriff Bovis. I don't understand why you're standing up for it. Uh, well, you have to. I mean, she is a woman now under uh, duress, under pressure. She's made a mistake. I feel there is no reason now to start crucifying the lady um, just because she's made a mistake. It's right. because she's so very good looking. Why, why good we... looking people get a bad deal why in life. Don't, you know? don't, I don't know why you're good looking. Good looking people, people get a bad deal. Because you're not one of them. Uh, how about this from Cy the Trucker? What? Maybe Sharapova's doctor is as elusive as the great Professor Banner and can't be pinned down for an interview. <laughs> well, you know, there is the Hippocratic Oath you've got to worry about. Mick Remember says, that. total gerrymandering. Paul, mm. these idiots tried to enlist me in this bent vote and I'd already voted well, for on, the Chester Hang on, can we have the plate. result of the vote, please? OK. Uh, the result of the vote is as follows. Yes. Uh, votes cast yes. 2,148. A record number. Which is a massive boost in the numbers. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and I, I'm suggesting so I like to you... I to hear. I'm suggesting to you yes. uh, that that is as a result of all these fake accounts voting for you. I haven't got any fake uh, accounts. Sadly, sadly for, yes. for all of those uh, idiots, as they were just described, and you... Yes. Uh, it's a draw. 50%. 50%. 50-50. So as much Ooh. as your uh, hard-earned Ooh. you know, bribery and uh, j- chicanery no. uh, have now been exposed, no. the best you could actually muster was a, was a draw. No, not so at all. So it's now five and a half to uh, four and a half. That is a fantastic result for me because at one stage it was 54-46 in your favour. Yeah. And all I did by... Um, you know, sensible, regulated comment and debate, mm. I managed to convince people that it was better to vote for me because my uh, no, choices, winners and losers, were of a higher quality. It's well, quite as simple as that. Well, as I say, I mean, if quite you're... Quite as simple as that. If you're, well, if you're mm. willing to put out about ten different tweets making people vote for you and you're happy with then getting a draw, mm. then I'm very sorry for your ambition. I... Because if your ambition is to draw, then I'm afraid you're not winning. Um, I think you'll find that if we have some sort of competition in one of our shows, the two mics, I think it uh, remains on both of us to follow the course of the competition that took place last night, winners and, and losers. And to play fair. And to play fair, yeah. but to also make the audience aware of the competition and to invite them in to get involved. You, of course, didn't do any of that today. You no, were, I never do that. You were out on the bladderation no, I trail never, this no, afternoon, no, I, was, I think, I weren't a, you? No, I was at a work meeting, actually. You were at a work meeting. Yeah. It did it involve taking a drink or two? It did, yeah. It did, yeah. Bladderation trail, then. Thank you very much indeed. Whilst, uh, whilst, let me read, I, uh, let me read. whilst I committed myself mm. and applied myself to the job in hand, which, of course, was to make sure that our listeners, millions of them that are out there, got a fair deal in trying to make up their minds on who to vote for and winners and losers, and the ones who had made the mistake early on voting for you found themselves rowed back as the day went on, and now I will just about just accept the draw. draw. I'll just accept well, the draw. That's all you got. You got I'll a accept. draw. I'll as accept. simple as that. Ian says this, now Sharapova has fallen on hard times, yeah. Porky can make his move, offering his Portsmouth penthouse as a sanctuary. 
Well, I mean, you know, it's I'm not always... Portsmouth, by the way. It's Gosport. It is Gosport, which is not quite the same. It's it's a it's a uh, more and it's not uh, a penthouse either. More exclusive. It's not area. a penthouse, is it? it certainly is. It's just in the sky. Us, it's just... in the sky. Well, no, by it's the way, not in the sky. It's up about five floors. By the way, they've uh, they've knocked down an old school building just down the road from me to put another exclusive block of apartments really? up. Oh, Sounds it's a up right and coming. Your place. It's no, always, no, they're always building something down well, there. Just built an oldies, haven't they? Just built an oldies. You know, so it's it's up and coming. Believe me, up and coming. Yeah, yeah. Has been up and coming for years. John says what? this: Is Porky trying to compare himself to Maria Sharapova? Uh, he's more like Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> what, like si- what a silly oh, comment! Brilliant. What a silly, silly comment! Honestly, yeah. I mean, how can you compare uh, Miss Sharapova, one of the world's great tennis players, with Anne Widdicombe, who was a worthy but ultimately failed politician? John says this: She's outstanding because she's benefited from performance-enhancing drug use for ten years. Mm. You can't really argue with that, can you? Well, uh, well, well, it wasn't on the band list for nine and a half of those years, that so you can't. Matter. So you can't say no, that. But no, but it doesn't matter. Of that's course, the it bit, matters. That's the bit that people like you don't get. You know, she's been taking a performance-enhancing mm. drug mm. for the best part of ten years, which wasn't a banned. It doesn't substance. matter whether it was banned. The but fact it wasn't. That perform- she's taken it for performance-enhancing purposes, yeah. and now she's finally uh, uh, had been caught out taking. All right, it, right? all right. And th- so now she's saying, "Oh, I took it for diabetes." Okay, creatine. You know what creatine is? Creatine. Creatine. No. Creatine. Creatone. Creatone. Creatone or creatine? Creatine. 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 It's creatine, <laughs> right? It's your problem. What is it? Creatine. Creatine or creatine. Now, that is, Are you that sure is it's creatine. Yeah, it's a supplement, and I'm not sure if it still applies today, but certainly a few years ago, mm. Arsene Wenger had no problem whatsoever in admitting that he encourages players to take creatine, OK? Right. Well, what is it? It's a supplement. What do you it, mean a supplement? It's an energy supplement. Right. It's like, you know, you go into a chemist and you get these pick me up type pills or whatever they are. You no, know I what I mean? don't. No, you tell well, me. I well, don't take well, pick me up type well, pills. Well, I don't either. I, I, I take well, what sort of pills are you talking beta about? because only one third of my heart works and I have to try and keep alive, you know, stay alive, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a daily so, battle. Sadly. Daily so battle. From, oh, from that's Mark. a terrible thing it's to a say. Shame, it's a shame none of Porky's assortment of heart drugs have any, don't have any performance-enhancing qualities. Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't, uh, really. But, but uh, certainly Arsene Wenger used to encourage his players to take this creatine stuff and there's always been debate about whether it was performance-enhancing, whether it should be banned. It's not banned. And therefore, it wasn't banned in those days. I'm not sure if it has been reclassified. Mm. But uh, they took it because it was... Was a, there was nothing illegal about it. You can't possibly blame Maria Sharapova for taking a substance which she felt helped her um, ability to play I can blame her. if it wasn't banned. Well, no, she's, you can't. Well, she's blamed herself. She you said, can't. I made a terrible mistake. So even she's accepted that she made a mistake. She made a mistake because when it was banned, she didn't stop taking it, but she didn't make a mistake taking it for nine years when it wasn't banned. No, she, she? Well, she did, because you're supposed to take it for... Uh, if you're taking it for some form of, uh, you know, anti-diabetes thing, okay. you take it for four to six weeks. If she, if she decided... I don't understand. She said because she's Russian and decent-looking. Yeah. That's yes. the only reason you're defending her. Uh, absolutely outrageous statement and, and nonsensical. Ab- you know, I've got you down to a T. I'm on the side of justice, OK? That's all. And I just think that you cannot... Uh, you know, you're trying to make, oh, she's been cheating for 10 years. She hasn't been cheating for 10 years. And and I'm afraid afraid you're misinforming our audience, the millions of listeners out there, by trying to indicate that she has been cheating for 10 years. She simply hasn't. Well, she's been taking performance-enhancing drugs for the best part of 10 years. She's been taking, for the past 10 years, substances which were not banned by the authorities right. in tennis or athletics. But why has she been taking them? Because she felt better in taking them. Oh, she was allowed to take them better. and it was permissible. Mm. Here you are. Now, the guy who's supposed to be on top of this is Martin Ziegler, chief sports writer of the Times, right? Uh-huh. I have tomorrow morning's Times here. Sharapova was worn five times. Is that the same Martin Ziegler that used to be the Press Association? Martin Ziegler? No. I no. think it must be. There can't be more than two Martin Zieglers. Uh, well, there was never a Martin Ziegler at the... Oh, at the Press Association. Yeah, yeah where you used was, to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah could have been. Yeah, could where have been. you used to work. Yeah, but uh, not in my time. Now, it says, Maria Sharapova was warned by tennis authorities no, f- no fewer than five times in the month before she failed a doping test that the drug she was taking had been added to the list of banned substances. Hmm. The 28-year-old is facing a lengthy suspension, di da di da di da however... di da di da Yeah. Is that what it says? No. However, it can be disclosed that during December there were five separate communications to tennis players, including Sharapova. Oh, I see. So so they're saying they didn't warn her individually, specifically. They're saying that five warnings went out to tennis players, of which she is one. Well, of which she is one. So she would have been warned five times. You can take that as red. 
Tell you what, she, uh, you know, there's sort of headlines here saying it's going to cost her £100 million oh, yeah. and all this kind of stuff. I mean, that's ridiculous. It's not going to cost £100 well, million. Yeah. Pounds. Well, because... Well, she's had Nike cancel the sponsorship. Yes. She's had the watch company Tag Ho. Tag Ho, yeah. Sponsor, cancel uh, yeah. Cancel yeah. the sponsorship. Yeah, sure. And somebody else as well. Yeah, but to be honest, I mean, she, what would she have left in tennis at the highest level? Three years, four years? That means that... Doesn't matter. They're talking about £25 million pounds a year, mm. even at her... Yeah, I suppose it could be. Could be. She earned £20 million pounds last year, so it could be right. Yeah, could yeah, be right. right. It is right. I don't yeah. know why you're doubting it. Yeah. No, I'm not doubting Flank. it. Not doubting uh, it. Uh, we've got lots coming up. We're going to talk to Mark okay. Donaldson. Uh, we've got Ask Porky, of course, if you haven't sent yeah. in a question and had it answered or had a problem solved. Yes. Uh, Mr Perry is, of course, here to help. We'll be doing that a little bit later on. And I found out something fantastic as well. All right, well, tell me after this. OK. This is Talk Sport. Yep. Get the job done on Talk Sport with Tool Station. Will Spain reign again? And Spain are into the lead. Are France in with a chance? Oh! Or will the three Lions finally roar? As the International League prepared to go head-to-head to lift the biggest prize in European football, join Hawksby and Jacobs every Monday from 1 to find out which team can get the job done. If you wait for Euro 2016 on Talk Sport with Tool Station. Low prices on top trade brands. Open late seven days a week. Find your nearest branch at toolstation.com. The best sports news, exclusive interviews and unmissable opinion in this week's Sport Magazine. Download your free Sportfield iPad edition now. Get in-depth previews, stunning photography and exclusive video content. Sport Magazine is now available in iPad, Kindle Fire HD and Android editions. Sport Magazine, the weekend starts here. Mighty power complaints. What's this I hear about your incredible Cheltenham offer being available to everyone, even Riff Raff? You mean this offer? Money back as a free bet if your horse finishes second in all races at Cheltenham. That's every single race, every single day. Yes, but surely not for the great unwashed too. Whoa. Do they get to enjoy the scent of their own box? Mm, no, I suppose they don't. You're right. Thanks, Paddy Power. You're welcome. Win and win part of each way. Single bets only. Max free bet £25. Valid for seven days. Stake not included in winnings. TNC supply. 18 plus. Gambleaware.co.uk. Drive on Talk Sport. The UK's only sports dedicated drive time with Sky Sports. The sharpest analysis on all the day's action from the giants of sport. Shane Warne is with us on the show. How are you doing, Shane? Good night. Guys, how are you? Laser guided comment and rapid reaction from a nation of sports fanatics. Into the corner of the net. Drive home with Darren Goff and Adrian Durham. Who else? Weekday afternoons from four on Talk Sport with Sky Sports, the home of the Barclays. Your problems uh, and uh, any quandaries you may need uh, an answer for at the two mics on Twitter, or you can send them to the Facebook page as well. We've got loads on there. Now, let me read you some of these. Hackman says this. Yep. Dida, dida, dida. Yes. The plank porky needs to learn how to read. Oh, for goodness sake, man. All I was trying to do was, was spare you three or four paragraphs of, well, uh, God for that. of verbiage yeah. to get to the point of the story. Mm. Brendan, as that. Brendan says, surely with Porky's links to the Russian underworld, perhaps Ooh. he could ask his comrades at the KGB to assist Miss Sharapova. Mm. Uh, Freddie says, good riddance to Sharapova. Shriek Rapova, he calls her. She should have been banned a long while ago for the awful noise that came out of her mouth. See, it's all very harsh stuff. And I mean, bad. you know, why people against well, her? Because, people because she's not... elegant, no. she's six foot. Because she's a she's cheat. Very good looking no, lady. She's a cheat. She's a cheat. Well, I mean, she's made a mistake. She's only a mistake. Oh, you know, I think, really? I think it'll shake itself out. Lee Harvey Oswald made a mistake as well, I suppose, in your oh, eyes, did he? That's a despicable I thing mean, to you know, do. How about this one from Panama? I mean, how can you do that? What? How can you compare Maria Sharapova yeah. to the man who assassinated? John F. Kennedy. Well, because you, you can say you, somebody made a mistake. You can say anything. That you can say that terrible. about anybody. I, I mean, I'm anybody. appalled. I'm appalled. How about this? I think from the Bannerman. audience will be appalled. No, they won't be. I think I the think, broadcasting I think, authorities I th- will be appalled. I think Porky has been on the creatine, creatone and methadone. More <laughs> yeah. Porky nonsense. I don't think so. And Craig says creatine is not illegal and can be purchased at any supermarket. Well, there you go. It's used to promote muscle repair and recovery. Yeah, well, they, So yeah. it is not a prescription medicine. No, no, I right. know it's not, and that's what I'm saying, but it is a controversial one. People are always saying, oh, it's, you know, it's uh, an energy enhancer and all that kind of stuff. I'm just saying... Oh, yeah, a banana is an energy enhancer. Yes, You're it not is. Going to say that's illegal. But it's not on the band list, is no, it? No, of course it's not on the well, band ni- list. Well, neither but you don't have this to go, drug. Yeah, but hang on, you don't have to go to a doctor to get yeah. it, and that's the difference. Well, this drug was not on the band list, Mike. It's as simple as that. You know, you just look at the facts, please, and stop doubting them. Well, it, well I'm afraid it was on the band list, it, and that's why she's been caught cheating. It wasn't on the band list for the first nine years. Well, that's forget why about she kept the first taking nine it. Years. Forget about the first nine years. No. Remember the last year. How can you year? forget about the first nine years? You can't. Well, because she's not being held to account for the last the first nine years, but she is being held to account for for taking an illegal drug during a Grand Slam tournament in Australia. Yeah, we know that, and I think the audience are getting rather tired of uh, these repetitive statements, OK? Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Right, go on. Did you see that amazing picture that I posted on Twitter this morning when I went home? What, of the the sunrise? Yeah. 
I think I probably did. You think you probably yes, did? Yes, yes. And did you not think it was remarkable? No, I didn't think it was particularly spectacular. You didn't notice it, did you? I did. Did I... you not see that in the cheese grater building... Yes. ..the reflection was like a mirror, and actually you could see the entire sunrise coming up? Look I... at that. Look at that. That is an incredible picture. The fact that you didn't notice that... I've seen that a few times before. You're... You've never seen a picture like that before? I, I've, I'm sure I have. I'm sure because I have. Because the point about the picture is, yeah. right, that yeah. uh, because the, the, that part of the building faces east... Yes. ...right, yes. The, sun, the sun rises behind me, where I'm taking the picture from... Right. ...and what you're seeing yeah. is what's behind me. Have you reflected... shared that picture with our millions of listeners? I've tweeted it this morning. And have you had any responses? Yeah, of course. It's been liked by 27 people. Yeah. Uh, retweeted seven times. Yeah, it's not that... I mean, are you trying to make it now you're some kind of super photographer or something? I'm saying... No, well, the thing about taking pictures yes. is what is, is seeing them it doesn't matter you know what oh, the quality the seeing of, of them it's the it? seeing of what, the picture you know, having the eye for them yeah, is that it exactly. yeah oh yeah. i see it's right okay. you're good at that are you well i have a a, 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 a good sort of bent for design definitely yeah. that's where why, did you spend most why... of the day it was in a licensed establishment wasn't it no it wasn't today no well i went home i made some breakfast right, made myself yeah. a frittata if a, you'd like to a know frittata. let's talk about our days because i always like doing that because i know that you don't like to reveal what you've been doing i'll tell you exactly what i did i went to sleep at about um right uh i had a delivery of some uh groceries from ricardo excellent uh at 12.05. I'm very pleased When I you. woke up. I woke up for that, so I had about five hours sleep. Excellent. Uh, I then did some uh, some stuff around the house. Yes. Uh, and I went out around about one thirty quarter to 2. Excellent. Um, and uh, I was out at a meeting. Yes. Uh, and then I met my daughter and had a couple of drinks with her, and I got yeah. home about 6 o'clock. And where was the meeting? Where? It was yes. in Borough Market. Uh, oh, what, sorry, at a market stall, was it? Oh, it was in a pub in Borough oh, Market. Oh, it was in a pub, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, OK, let's get that straight then, yeah. shall we? Yeah. Market well, Port, well, I think it's I have, called, isn't I it? I have yeah. no reason to hide what yes, I do. Yes, OK. Now, you tell us what you did all day. I had a brilliant day. Go on. I discovered, right, mm. who invented the dishwasher. <laughs> Why? What's How? your problem? How did you discover that? Through reading my journals, yeah. which were delivered today. You don't seem to follow the, the, the context in which I'm putting everything. No, no. Let's, let's hear, I've just told you what I did from the morning, from the moment I've I got home. I've just told you what I've done. No, well, so that's it. Well, I think it was a brilliant discovery. No, hang on. You got home at what time? Uh, what time did I get home today? About five. About five? Yes. OK. We well, took a long way home, did you? No. I didn't leave here till about 25 past four. Oh, if you really? remember, we, we were uh, okay. having discussions after the, um, after the end of the four oh, o'clock yeah. bit of the show. OK. Yes. And so what happened when you got home? When I got home? Yeah. I sorted things out. Sorted what out? Well, things like... Why are you so secretive? I'm not secretive. Yeah, I've just told you what I did No, I'm day. just trying to remember what I did. I made remember. sure I'd got all my papers in check and all that what kind papers? of stuff. The papers no, that I have not, delivered. It's not East Germany you live in. No, no. You have your papers? No. Yeah, my papers, yeah. <laughs> and then I, then I, uh, I had a you sleep. about your newspapers? Till about half seven, and then I got up and uh, sorted so, out the rest of the day. So how long did you sleep for? About two and a half hours. So you went to bed at five? Yes, about then. I thought you said you were sorting your papers. I was, yeah, but it only took us a few minutes. Oh, OK. Yeah. So you woke up at 7.30? Yes. And then what? Got up. And what did you do? I got on with life. Well, got on with life? Yeah. Well, specifically what? Well, I told you, I, d- I had a new journal delivered and yeah. I discovered that... Why jo- can't you just tell us what you did? I'm telling you that I discovered that Josephine Cochrane, uh, a woman... Cochrane? Invented, yeah, Cochrane invented... Cochrane? The, yeah, Cochrane, that's right. She invented the dishwasher. Really? OK? Right. She had to invent the dishwasher because her politi- politician husband died, left her bankrupt. Oh, yeah. And all the debt... Who was he, then? Hey? Was he famous? He was an o- Ohio businessman. Ah, businessman? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he, uh, and and she. Um, what happened? What, what's the problem? What, why? Carry on. Well, no, your on. problem is. Well, your pronunciation. Anyway, they had a big house. Her name's Cochrane, and the, her husband they, was a businessman. They, they they had a big house, and after. Why don't you just sell the house then? Uh, well, that's not. Uh, that's uh, that's a complicated one. But when he died, she had a big house, which was full of uh, very expensive china. Oh yeah. Like cups and. Sources uh-huh. and plates. Well, so why did she sell all that off then? No, the problem was she noticed that the servants were getting uh, rather um, careless and were chipping the somewhere. servants. The servants, the servants. I she had loads you said of servants. That she was bankrupt. No, no, this so is the got, point. She's got loads of crockery, yep. loads of servants, yep. and a, a big house, house, and she had to keep it going. It doesn't so, sound like she's on the minimum wage. Well, really, no, I'm telling you, she was going to have to sell the house and pay death duties and all sorts of things. Then she noticed all the cr- all the cracked. Crockery mm. and decided there must be a better way of doing this because you know they they and and she decided to start washing a lot of it herself. Right. Then she found her hands getting all wrinkled and oh, mangled. Dear. Poor and, dear. Uh, yeah, and so she decided to do something else. So she actually went to see an engineer and put her idea to him. He said it couldn't work, mm. but she bought loads of uh, bits and pieces from junkyards. 
This was in about 1870. OK. Right? Yeah. And she invented the dishwasher. Mm. And she went to the biggest hotel in Ohio, where she lived, and sold it to them. They bought it. And at the next trade fair, she went there, patented it, mm. and made a huge, you know, fortune with hundreds of millions of dollars. And to this day... Uh, the That's company... why it's known as the Cochrane, I presume. I don't know. It was known as the Cochrane. Well, it's not, is it? What? The dishwasher. No, it's known as the dishwasher. Yeah, exactly. Why yeah. is her name not associated with it? Well, why should it be? Because well, she invented it and she made the copyright. Do, do, you know who, do you know which company today survives from the original company that she f- formed? The Whirlpool. Whirlpool, OK. Whirlpool is yeah. the company which today carries the name of the company she invented with the dishwasher. I think that's a brilliant story, isn't it? It is. It's a brilliant American invention what story. Did, what did you do after that? What did I do after that? Yeah, well, it's taken you four minutes to tell me that story. So it's now currently 7.35. I then went out for a constitutional war oh, yeah. for one go? hour. When did you go? It was cold this morning. It was very cold. It was only one degree when I left here. Yes, that's true. I went up the hill. Up the hill? Yeah, around and down again. Right. Yeah. It's because I like going up hills because it gives the heart uh, a greater desire to pump. Does it? And I need to get some pumping action <laughs> into the heart at the moment. Okay. What are you laughing at? Why well, are you laughing well, at my is... infirmity? Well, because I'm waiting to know what you did for the rest of your day. I mean, I can tell I told, you... I told you. Quite... No, you haven't. You've only got to about 8.30 so far. No, 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 no. I found out I invented the dishwasher. Yeah. That's important. How long did that take? I, well, a couple of hours. A couple of, of research hours. and all that kind of Two stuff. Hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Went for a constitutional war. Yeah, so still not even lunchtime. I then had to go and sort out some paperwork, OK, had to go and buy, buy some new uh, files and things. Right? Files? Yes, files, yeah. So where'd you go for that? Ryman's. Ryman's? Mm, Ryman's, yeah. OK. And I then... Er, 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 I'm trying to remember. I think I then went home and sorted out all the paperwork, which took quite some considerable <laughs> time. It was a boring day. And, no, no, no. I then caught up with the night manager. <laughs> Oh, you're laughing at the latest episode. <laughs> it's pretty brilliant. Good. Are you going to put it on Porky Vision then? Well, it might do. I'm going to watch it again because I didn't quite understand all of it. To be yeah. honest, it you can know, be confusing if you're yeah. not concentrating. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is absolutely true. Yeah, it's come to a very. I made the mistake of watching the second Good episode stage. quite uh, late on uh, uh, on Sunday. Uh, and I must uh, say there was a couple of things I wasn't sure. Yeah, about. absolutely. So uh, I had a fulsome day. But Hackman at least Man says it's very obvious that Porky can't remember what he's done today. Don't be silly. <laughs> Don't be silly. You uh, can't remember. Of course, I can remember. I've told you exactly what I did, and I tell you what, I've had a much more productive day than you did standing in a pub all afternoon. Is that right? Yes. You don't even know what I was talking about or who I was talking to, so I'm, you can't I, even I, say that. I, I can guess. Really? I can guess, okay. mate. I know the sort of people you mix with. Yeah, right. And they're not exactly those who'd be invited to become members of the House of Lords, you know? Mm, actually, I've that got that a very sure. good friend who's in the House of Lords. Have you really? Yeah, I have. Yeah, well, most of them are like... Uh, what, what did... Um, what did Neil? Uh, what's his name? We call Neil. Them? What's his name? You know the guy who used to run the Labour Neil Party. Armstrong. No, he's he was the guy on the moon. Neil, you know, Lord and Lady. What are they called now? You mean Neil Kinnock. Neil Kinnock. Yeah, I mean he called them brigands and and robbers. Was and that before never he became? Well, before oh, yeah. he became one. Oh yeah, then yeah. he became one. That yeah. was after he had you know twenty three years in Europe. Bag. The Welsh win back, 20 yeah. years in Europe. And, and by the way, part, of the, the time, by the, part way. of the deal when you've served in Europe, mm. as long as he has, you know, taking huge amounts of public money for you and half a dozen members of your family, when you come back to this country, you get a huge pension, but there's one of the wink-wink, nudge-nudge things about the pension is don't start criticising Europe when you're in the House of Lords, otherwise your pension might be reviewed. Yeah, yeah, very it's possibly. a racket of the highest order. Really? Okay. Highest order. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Mark Donaldson's coming up next. We'll get some more sense. Out of here. Great. Rule up, rule up, ladies and gentlemen, and prepare to be amazed and astounded by Colin Murray's Carnival of Curiosities, featuring a feast of fascinating facts and a farrago of fiendish falsehoods to untangle from the tantalizing truths as Mr. Murray delights and astonishes you with his assortment of amicable acquaintances. <laughs> Don't miss Fact or Fiction every Thursday morning from 10 on Talk Sport with We Gain for Men Extra Strength Scalp Foam, scientifically proven to help stop and even reverse hereditary hair loss. Contains minoxidil. Always read the label. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. A terrific performance. Turn of pace and eye for goal. Shout about it. Talk sport. Liverpool FC is hard as hell. United, Tottenham, Arsenal. Watch my list and I will spell. Because they don't just play but they can rap as well. My idea was it to build Liverpool into a bastion of invincibility, you know, like... Oh, 
Napoleon had that idea, he would conquer the bloody world. You have to say, uh, you know, football songs yes. are not really uh, quite the thing, are they? No, not really. What is? What was that then? What was that sort of? Uh, Did you rather... recognise that? Well, I mean, something, it's clearly it something Anfield, to do with Liverpool. What was you the know, Anfield but... rap? Oh, the Anfield rap. You know, oh, remember right. the Anfield rap? John no. Barnes and all that. Yeah, well, you know, if you say so. Well, I mean, we're always playing Z cars on this show. Well, so we only play Z cars if we're a, talking about Everton. Yeah, for a bit of balance, I Anfield thought we might rap. play the Anfield no, rap. And no, I'll tell you why no. we played it, because why? Mark right. Donaldson is coming on. Oh, right. excellent. And Mark Donaldson, yes. uh, as you may know, uh, amongst his many other talents, right. is writing a book with Steve Nichol. Oh, OK. About his time at Stevie Liverpool. Stevie Nichol. Stevie Nichol. And just as we're about to speak to him, he's writing a chapter about the Anfield rap. Oh, it's excellent. Uh, that's, that's excellent. So it's very I'm topical. Sure, as much as you love talking about Liverpool, well, let's do it. <laughs> yes. Mark, Mark, a very good morning to you. How are you both? Yeah, very well. Yeah, very sorry well, sorry to interrupt your uh, your creative flow. <laughs> no, not at all. Have, you got, have you got Mr Nickel with you? No, 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 no. I've, no, it, it's past his bedtime over here, so... Uh... <laughs> No, no, it's a, it's a lot. I, I spent a year with him to, to get all this stuff, all the pieces of the jigsaw. Yeah. Now I've got time to myself to try and put all these pieces of the jigsaw together to make a book. Yeah, right. That's that's where we are. But the the the, uh, the Anfield rap chapter just now. I've just started on it. So uh, to to hear that uh, was uh, well, certainly brought back memories. Yeah. What is there to uh, to write? You know, in terms of a chapter about a piece of music as bad as that, Mark. If you don't mind me asking. <laughs> Yeah, well, did you know it got to number three in the charts? No. It did. It got to number three in the charts. Only Wet, Wet, Wet and Fairground Attraction were ahead of the Anfield rap. Good God. Here's a question for you. Yeah. Written by by who? The Anfield rap? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Some Merseyside group, like, for instance, uh, who was that? Uh, Echo Beach lot. Who were they? Echo Beach? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you remember them? Martha and the Vandellas. No, you know. Martha and the Muffins. No, on Echo Beach. Da, da, yeah, da, that was da, Martha da, da. and the Muffins. No, it wasn't. Was yeah, it? Yeah, it, it was, was written yeah. by a player. It was written by a player. It was written by Craig Johnston. Craig Johnston. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Oh, what, the guy with the football boots? That's right. He invent- yes. invented the Adidas Predator boot, Predators, didn't he? Predators, yeah, indeed, right. yeah. 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 He, he wrote it. And um, and as I'm just writing, um, it wasn't uh, it wasn't something that players were going to be able to retire from because they got a hundred pounds each in expenses. <laughs> and there was a mystery guest. Now I would give you the whole. You need to buy the book to find out. But like you'll probably buy it anyway. Hopefully. So yeah. the mystery guest yeah. was at Juventus at the time and didn't let on to anybody. He was coming back to Liverpool. It was Ian Rush. It must have been Rushy, who, obviously. Who who was in attendance at the time as well? And they were all drunk. But that doesn't surprise yeah. me. Rushy, of course. That was the famous occasion. Rushy came back and when asked what it was like in Juventus, he said, it's "Like being in a foreign country." <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they'll talk. Uh, uh, they'll talk foreign. Absolutely, yeah, astonishing stuff. Yeah. Well, it's, well. So, when's the book coming out, Mark? It's out September, October. That'll be the book launch at Anfield. Uh, yeah. Alan Hansen doing the forward. So, yeah, looking forward to well, it. Well, I'm, so sure I'm sure it'll do better than Rooney Tunes, Porky's last uh, oh, effort, dear, yeah. uh, which you can now buy 100 <laughs> copies on um, Amazon for a pound. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> all books get there eventually, especially when, especially when they've been around for a decade and yeah, they've yeah. become legendary. Mm. Um, anyway, Mark, what are, you, um, what are you thinking of the current position what here in Britain? Thinking? Yes, yeah, what are you thinking? The current position here in Britain regarding Steve McLaren, because it's a woeful situation. Why are they taking so long? Well, I you mean, see, uh, Rafa Benitez, I think, is lining himself up. Yeah, but, I mean, the Liverpool connection there is, is old Rafa, isn't it, Mark? There is that, but there's talk of David Moyes. I mean, here, here's the other thing as well. You've got Brendan Rodgers, Rafa Benitez, David Moyes as well. Would they want to be managing in the Championship next season? Now, the, whoever takes over is going to have the opportunity to keep Newcastle in the Premier League. However, there's a strong possibility, because they're not doing well right now, mm. that they could end up playing in the Championship next season. Yes. So is that off-putting for some of the potential candidates? I think more off-putting is the fact that when you sign up for Newcastle, you are literally signing up into an empire, which is what it is, Mr Ashley's empire, in which very little is known about the the pressures and the and the requirements made upon you to work for Mike Ashley. I think that's the, the biggest um, problem to, to anybody well, who wants to sign up. 
Yeah, I mean, is he the issue here? Is he the common denominator that that, that is the big problem? I was sitting yesterday just at my desk at ESPN talking to Shaka Hislop, and we're talking about various games that he played in, and I'd mentioned the the 3-2 win against Barcelona when Tino Espria scored a hat-trick. Pavel Turnacek, God rest his soul, was in goal. Shaka was on the bench, and it was a magnificent magnificent turnout. It was a full Mm. house. It was a great occasion, the Champions League. But that's the kind of Newcastle I remember. Philippe Albert's trip against Manchester United in the 5-0. Yeah. Those are the kind of days, the glory days uh, of Newcastle. And I know they didn't win anything back then, mm. but they entertained. Keegan had them playing. They were flying. Remember the, 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 the interview he gave to Sky when he went nuts at Sir Alex yeah. Ferguson? And now, what on earth has gone wrong at Newcastle? Sh- Shaka doesn't really know. I mean, they've gone through a whole host of managers, and they've, they've got rid of one, got rid of another one. Well, well I mean, we all what... do know, Mark. With the greatest respect, we do know. We know that it's run by a man who is a billionaire businessman whose um, priorities in running a football club are not that the number one priority is success on the field. His number one priority is the economic model, which is the club. I remember going down to when I was uh, home last Christmas. I took my dad to see Newcastle Everton. It was 3-2. I think it was Christmas 2014. And yeah. we went around the back uh, to get to our seats. And it's been a long time since I was at St. James's Park. And I saw mm. this huge Sports Direct yeah. kind of Newcastle retail store, which is fine. I get that. You're putting your money in and you can yeah. do things like that. I've got no problem with that. But, I mean, it's a bit like Trump over here, this whole presidential thing. He's got to where he's got to by kind of delegating to, to other people he trusts. He doesn't really get involved. The presidential thing is going to be completely different, and I don't mm. want to get into that. However, if Ashley delegates to experts, that will hopefully... Football experts. So he's, he's going to do better, you would think, than, than what he's doing. Yeah, so and, also, he... and also, he's got a very bad rap for considering how much money he's put into the club, and the fact yeah. that in the summer... Uh, he spent more money, or in the January transfer, whatever, yeah. he spent more money, did he not, uh, than any yeah. other team in the Premier League, and he more did, money yeah. than the Bundesliga put together. Yeah, I heard that as well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you also hear the stories of all the, one, all the French guys sit at one table at training uh, for, for meals, and all the English guys sit at another, and then there's a, there's a kind of fractious squad uh, mentality. I mean, having all mm. the money in the world, you've got to be able to spend it properly. Look at Tony Fernandez at QPR. They mm. went down, and everyone thought, well, they've got all the money, they'll just bounce straight by. It's not as easy as that. No, my of fear for not. New, yeah, my fear for Newcastle, if they go down, I'm not sure they'd come straight back up. No, I don't think they would. Uh, well, it'd be very difficult these days to come straight back up, although they did it last time with Chris Hooton, didn't they? They did, but look who's in that league. I mean, it's a yeah. very different league. It is, yeah. Again, speaking, speaking to Shaka about that, he, he's like, a, I mean, he was in there with Reading. He's like, it's a totally different league. It's not the same football you're playing every midweek. It's 46 games, mm. and it's a battle. You have to change your style sometimes because mm. just playing football doesn't always get you out of that league. Mm. Right, yeah, exactly no, right. no. I... Uh, we've got lots more coming up uh, on Talk Sport. Let battle commence as the war cry goes up. Six brave tribes will clash to lift the prized cup. Adrenaline will flow, sinew will strain. National pride stirs the blood in this ineffable game. Yet, who will triumph? Hold their line without fear. Find out on Talk Sport, because the Six Nations is here. This weekend, Talk Sport brings you regular updates on all the action and drama of the biggest competition in Northern Hemisphere rugby. Six Nations updates throughout the tournament on Talk Sport. Uh, I've got a tweet here from a guy called Ian. Uh, right. who says that he engineered the Anfield rap recording uh, really? with John Barnes and the team. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, good for him. A uh, Liverpool fan, I would imagine. Bit of musical history there. Yeah, right? OK. <laughs> Exactly Good. right. Uh, how about this from David in yeah. Essex, which is always a great name to have, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Mike and Porky says, surprise, surprise, the drug the Russian-born tennis player has been taking is also given to the Russian army to aid stamina and endurance in combat. <laughs> well, no family me. doctor required. Yeah, no, doesn't well, surprise me Well, it is a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? All the people yeah. that have been banned so far from the various sports that they've been uh, involved in, yes. they're all Russians, they've been taking the same drug. Yeah, your problem is you're obsessed now with the Sharapova situation. Not at all. Yeah, well, I think you are. I'm just, I'm just concerned that yeah. you're backing the wrong horse, well, as usual. listen, I forgot to tell you about my heroic uh, duty to society uh, last weekend. Oh, yeah? Yes. Last weekend? Yes, yes, oh, yes, 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 yes. I thought you would say last weekend. Oh, all right. well, last, last doesn't matter. I mean, you are... By the way, you know the lady who's had to um, resign at... Um, Margaret Byrne. Dinsworth, Margaret Byrne. Sunderland. The report of a, you know, a demise, which, you know, I'm very sorry somebody loses their job. It's, uh, Don't be it's ridiculous. Not, it's not nice. Don't but, be ridiculous. But do you, I hate that fake sanctimony. Do you know what her salary was a year? No. 633,000. What? 
I mean, that is ludicrous. It is amazing, isn't you it? You know, with the greatest of respect, the chief executive of a football club, a football club is not a huge business. No. It's not really. You no. know what I mean? I mean, so, there's it's, it's big numbers, but I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I mean, OK, a lot of money comes in. They're given a load of free money, so to speak, from the TV companies via the Premier League yeah. through, through Mr Scudamore's um, skill at negotiations. But once they've got it, that's, then they've just got to deal with it. Yeah. And uh, it's not like they're running, you know, a company which has to... I don't know, take a gamble on how many units of a product it uh, manufactures, how many cars it sells, right. or uh, advertising, budgets and all that. It's, it's not a huge job. 633000 But you know what? I bet what they'd say is that mm. because of the numbers involved and because of the amounts yeah. of, of money that the players are paid, and presumably the chairman and everything else and the yeah. owners making a lot of money, yeah. that you know they do it commensurate to the market value. Well, I and mean, all that. that's all very well, but it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of uh, negotiating skill to a player comes in your office and says 120000 a week or the agent you say yeah all right is the manager think you're worth it right here you go get it and that kind of stuff anyway that's by the by yeah it I, is. I, I met by the way you mentioned Middlesbrough there in, in error but you, do you know that sorry man Sunderland yeah. yeah I know you did but yeah. I mean Middlesbrough uh, lost last night to Rotherham yeah they did actually Neil Warnock's uh, success story goes one on 1-0 wasn't it and I had yeah. him, it was 1-0 and I, yeah. that's the three games in a row he's won yeah I know he's so done, I mean uh, he's doing very well he's doing very well too. he was one I, of my winners of course I met Margaret Byrne once when I I was a guest uh, of Everton oh, up yeah. at Sunderland it was that time I flew up remember and I said I told you how the metro is. You fly to Newcastle, mm. you get on their metro system, yeah. and you go all the way down into central Newcastle. And I got off there and went and had lunch with a load of mates because right. uh, it was uh, it was a three o'clock kickoff thing, and I got up there for about sort of ten thirty in the morning, mm. and then I got back on the metro. Went Blimey, to that's a long lunch, isn't it? Uh, ten thirty till three. No, the game kicked off at three. I got up there for about half one. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I got up there at half ten. I, no, I got up to Newcastle for half ten. Yeah. Now I'd lunch till about one, That's and then I got back on the Metro. Metro. The Metro. Me, 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 metro. <laughs> to go so down. You had a three-hour lunch, and then you had two hours of drinking before the game. Yes. Blimey. It doesn't. You know, you're Shocking. not very fast at working these things out, well, are you? I mean, well, I'm trying to keep to, repeating well, I'm everything. I'm trying to piece together. Anyway, precisely with a man with your, you know, alleged medical problems. Yes. Precisely how much drinking you actually do? Uh, uh, not a lot. It was more talking. Was it? But anyway, anyway. So we got to Sunderland, and uh, I was at the Everton party, and I went over to uh, Ms. Byrne. Yeah. Um, at the end of the game, you yeah. know, we we're back in the boardroom, and all that. Before I, I she like an ex-criminal lawyer or something. I mean, she's got no real connection to football, has she? Well, it doesn't matter really. I I mean, in, in a sense, you know, a lot of people who had nothing to do with football went into football because of the size of the money involved, yeah, as, yeah. You, as you've already commented upon. Mm. But, yeah, I mean, being a criminal lawyer, you thought she'd have handled the situation regarding the footballer who was, uh, you know, um, facing these allegations a little bit better. Yeah. But anyway, I, I said to her at the end of the game, uh, you know, and I was, I was with um, the Everton board people. Yeah. And I said, thank you very much indeed, uh, Ms Byrne, for your you know, hospitality today. It's very, very good here. And she didn't say anything. And, and I got the distinct impression that she wondered what I was doing in her boardroom, so to speak, you yeah. know, my boardroom. And then about two days later, when I got home, so I was a Saturday, Monday, I wrote a letter, as I do always, to people who've, um, you know, offered me hospitality at football clubs and thanked her very much. And I never got a reply from her. So, um, you know, I, I, n- I never really had a... A great sort of feedback from her, but there we are. Yeah, um, you know, it's... she apparently was one of the youngest chief executives in yeah, top she was. flight football. She was only thirty-one, and I think she recently just got married. All oh, right. Well, um... she was, and also she was moved up from being legal director and company secretary. I see. So that's how she got the job. She was yeah. already in the club. Yeah, that's okay. amazing. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. Well, there you are. Uh, anyway, look, my heroic uh, duty to society. Right. Oh, you still got all about that? Yeah, yeah. But I've got to. I think you're you, I think... rambling on. Aren't no, you? no. I think people should know about this. So yeah. what happens is. Uh, in Gosport, which yeah. is one of the country's biggest up and coming areas, right? Really? Which is where I well, live. you mean it's a bit run down? In no, other words. it's not run down and at you all. Know, if no, you were an no. estate agent and you say up and coming, yes. it means run down. No, no, up and coming. It does. The government are investing a load of money there to build new houses and everything, really? you know. So well, why go. do they keep making people redundant in P- Portsmouth then? I've no idea. Well, that's to do with the military side well, of things. Well, that's what I mean. There's yeah. no point building yeah. houses on one, on one side of the, uh, of the water well, and on the other side of the water making everybody unemployed well, so I, they can't I, afford to buy them. I can't answer for government planning policy because it's not uh, something I'm an expert on. Really? And, anyway, so um, there is a wonderful um, little sort of bar there called the Brew Pot. Right. OK? The Brew Pot in Gosport. In Gosport, uh-huh. yeah. And the thing is, there's a, there's, an, there's a brewery around there somewhere called Oak something. Oakmere or Oakland or something? What, like a microbrewery? Yes, yes, that's right. right. Yeah, except I don't think it's a microbrewery because it serves beers everywhere. But anyway, this is an outlet for that brewery. And it's not just an outlet for that brewery. It sells literally dozens of different bottles of 
beer from right. all over the world, uh-huh. literally. You know, it's it's a, it's like a beer museum. Right. But it's very laid back. Yeah. And the bar is not really a bar. It's like a counter. Uh-huh. And all the barrels are, 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 you know, behind the counter mm. and they pour you it from the barrel. So and it's all a this bit kind of an stuff. artisan's establishment. It is, it is. It's great, you know. And but that's deliberate, presumably. Yeah, of course it is. It's yeah. very laid back. There's a couple mm. of tables there and you can just sit there and read the paper and have a few beers. Oh, and they serve these wonderful array of pies. Oh, yeah. I had the, um, the chicken... Um, chicken and mushroom? No, it was the chicken. chicken and, and, leek. And, and the name of one of... King Henry VIII's wives, Aragon, Aragon, chicken and Aragon pie, OK? Because Anne of Aragon was one of the wives. Catherine of Aragon. Catherine of Aragon, that's right, yeah. yeah. Chicken and Anne Aragon of pie. Cleves, you're thinking of. Anne of Cleves. I'm sure it wasn't chicken of. and Cleves. No, it was chicken and Aragon. So I have the chicken and Aragon pie and a couple of pints of the old oak leaf, it's called. What did I say it was called? I've no idea. It's called oak leaf. I've lost oak the leaf. plot already. It's called oak leaf. I'm just going to go for a lie down, actually, and any, and any, no, no. anecdote. And anyway, as, I, uh, as I'm standing there receiving my beer... Uh, so I'm behind the sort of um, the till. I notice a black what wallet. What are you doing behind the till? Well, because I'm this side of the counter, right. and the chap serving me is that side of the counter. Well, surely he's behind the till. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I'm in front of the till, actually. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Yeah. So I'm in front of the till. So I notice a black wallet. Mm. And I looked around, and I thought, maybe I'm standing in somebody else's place, yeah. but there's no other beer. So I said to the chap serving me, I said, oh, I said, look, I said, I'm not sure if this is relevant. I said, there's a wallet here. Mm. He said, ah, a wallet, thank you. So, uh, is he, where is he from? Afghanistan? No, 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 you <laughs> idiot. So he goes round. He goes round the brew pot, which is really lovely, laid back little bar. You know, which take people time, go into. Long don't worry, just don't take worry, don't story. worry. And he asks everybody, if "It's their wallet," and yeah. it's not. So he says, "Right, okay, you all witness this. I'm going to have a look at this wallet and see if I can find who it is." So he opens it, and there's a, a credit card in it, mm. and it belongs to J.R. Braithwaite. J.R. J.R. Braithwaite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, incredibly. Yeah, yeah. So. Anyway, he goes out, and, and a guy in the corner says... Was there a driving licence in it with his address on it? No. No, just well, a credit card. Just one credit card? I don't know, but he, he picked out a credit card. Yeah. Anyway, anybody know Jay Rent? No. Oh, hang on, I know somebody called Jimmy, and he was in here earlier. Uh-huh. Right, give him a call. Anyway, it took hours to track down Jimmy, who eventually pitches up for his uh, wallet, yeah. right? And, uh, of course, I found it. You know, a more unscrupulous individual could have whipped off with it, of course. Well, why would you? Not that people in the brew pot would, so, you know. Yeah, but, but also, if you walk off with somebody's wallet and it hasn't got any money in it, there's nothing you really do with it. Well, that's right. Um, but I'm, you know, I, I still wait for the, the reward or some sort of, you know, big thank you or something what, like from that. from this guy, Jimmy? Yeah. Well, I don't think it's going to happen. Why? Because he doesn't want to know that you found his wallet sitting in front of the till. Well, somebody should have told him. But, you know, the guy, maybe he's given a reward to the guy from behind the pub, behind, yeah, the, behind the till. Maybe. Maybe he should I, go in there next time but and ask has that ever happened to you? What? I mean, do, well, A... Or have I found a wallet? Or, or have you lost a wallet? Um, I don't think I've ever lost a wallet. Because no. losing a wallet is the worst nightmare in the yeah. world. You all the credit cards, mm. a driving licence, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And the sheer relief that yeah. old Jimmy Braithwaite must yeah. have felt yes. when he got the call from his mate saying... And actually, they couldn't find him. They rung his dad. Mm. Uh, and they said, we've got your wallet. It must have been enormous. Yeah. And that relief, in my view, should have been translated... So you're looking for how much? Well, a... a, a, a a delivery of thanks would be enough. That'd be enough, OK? okay? Well, let's put out an all, an all you know, point bulletin yeah, for J.R. Braithwaite. J.R. Braithwaite. Where's, from where, Gosport. Where's the big thank you yeah, to Porky thank you? for rescuing your wallet yeah. from the possible clutches of... Uh, Ne'er do-gooders. Ne'er do-gooders is a very good word. <laughs> Indeed. God, that was a terrible story. No, it's not. It's I great you've got story. better ones next. It's this great. is Talk Sport. To celebrate the launch of the new Toolstation catalogue, we're playing New Kicks on the Block on TalkSport. All this week from one with Hawksby and Jacobs. You'll get 45 football seconds to answer as many silky skilled questions on Euro 2016 first timers and international newbies to win a top flight Milwaukee compact drill twin pack every day. Sorted. Listen up and play New Kicks on the Block all this week from one with Hawksby and Jacobs on TalkSport with Toolstation. Find your nearest branch at toolstation.com. Take control of your game with the new and improved mobile betting experience from William Hill. This is our fastest in-play product yet with easier access to your full range of in-play markets. And our new scoreboards give you in-depth stats and updates. So you can take it all in, then take control. Download the new and improved William Hill app now with a five-star rating from The Sun. When the fun stops, stop. 
Get a generous helping of the latest odds and tasty tips with Paddy's Punts every weekday afternoon from four on Drive with Durham and Goffey on Talk Sport with Paddy Power. You're welcome. With the form on the football. What a game. The going on the GGs. And they're off. The crack on the cricket. Six. And lashings of Paddy's famous generosity. Ah, come on, it gives a break to me a bit of crack, isn't it? Get your tips while they're hot with Paddy's Punts. Weekday afternoons from four with Adrian Durham and Darren Goff on Talk Sport with Paddy Power. You're welcome. Adrian Durham and Darren Goff. I'll read you about Christmas. Shall I read it to you? <laughs> yeah. This afternoon from four. If you read five or six pages to me every day, it'll be quicker. <laughs> Talk sport. Now, I've got a couple of uh, uh, corrections for you. Oh, yes. Uh, with regard to your chicken. <laughs> what? Chicken and Aragon pie. Why? What's, what's wrong with it? Well, Aragon is not... Uh, the, what you think it is. What is it then? Aragon is a, a region of Spain. Right. Which is hence Catherine, Catherine of Aragon. Right, came okay. from, right? Yeah. Uh, tarragon, on the other hand, is the, uh, is the herb uh, that normally is mixed with chicken in a pie. Is that right? As Dave has said, yes. it's chicken and tarragon, you pillock. Is it? Porky. Oh, I, I, thought uh, it was, uh, I thought it might have been named after uh, Henry VIII's wife. Oh, no. well, there you go. Simon says, yes. sure it wasn't chicken and tarragon. Yeah, probably. And Lee says, I think Porky yeah. might mean yeah. tarragon. Yeah, 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 and yeah. And how about this for a bit of local info from Gosport? Yes. Danny says, Gosport has a massive traffic problem. Last thing we need is more houses and people. I can't wait to leave. Well, <laughs> well no, they need to build a new road into it, that's for sure. And do you know what happened uh, a couple of years ago? They, they closed down a railway line that goes into Gosport. And instead of then converting the road that already comes in into a dual carriageway yeah. and the railway line into an outgoing dual carriageway... The railway so, line? Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they you mean the old railway line? Yeah, they discontinued yeah. the railway line. The, the train used to run right up to the end near mm. to where the ferry is, yeah. right near where I live at Rope Keys. The mm. station's still there, and they've right. converted the station you don't to... You give your address away. That's not, no, no, I don't want to. But they could easily have, have taken the lines up and made that into an exit road with mm. the incoming road turned into a carriageway, and that would have solved... But no, what do they do? Decided to go and build, uh, uh, turn it into a bus, uh, fast bus yeah. lane route, you know, which, which I don't know. Of course, buses are necessary for people who need to get about, but, you know, it's also very necessary if, if Gosport is to thrive, it's on the peninsula, mm. to um, design and build, which they've been trying to do for the last 50 years, I'm told, a decent road in yeah. and out of the place, you know. Tom says, I was in Gosport last summer, Porky. There's a pirate themed pub called the Jolly Roger. It's brilliant. The Jolly Roger is yeah. a great pub. It's around the back of the um, of the harbour, and I know Mike who runs it very oh, well. And really? he, it's, yeah, it's a great place. What a coincidence! You yeah. know the pub yeah. owner. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, right now, what hang is... on. I've got a couple more uh, tweets for okay. you. This from Roy. Yeah. Uh, you see, that's so typical of Porky. He needs yeah. kudos because he did the right thing. <laughs> yes. Well, no, what a desperately no. sad, insecure individual. No, I, I like to set the standards of behaviour. And the standards of behaviour are you've got to do the right thing. Yeah. Now, our um, our uh, technical director here at uh, talk sport. He just told me a story about when. Do you mean the executive producer? Uh, him as well. Yeah. Uh, he goes into a uh, restaurant in Stratford upon Avon yeah. and there's a per- with his girlfriend. There's a purse line in the entrance hallway. Picks it up, finds one card in it which mm. gives an identity, but a wrap of money yeah. with one of those bank wraps around it, oh, which yeah. indicates it's five thousand pounds. Really? Probably in a plastic bag or mm. something like that. You yeah. know. Anyway, hands it in and then says, "If this isn't See, claimed- imagine if you lost a bag of cash. Oh, terrible." You'd, Terrible. You'd be having palpitations. Oh, oh, oh completely, because it's non-traceable. Yeah. So anybody could whip it away and you, you, you wouldn't be any the wiser. But anyway, d- a great story ending, because by the end of the meal, he went to check and see if anybody claimed it because he wanted it reported to the police. Uh, the person who had lost it had mm. reclaimed it yeah. and left enough money to pay for um, our, our colleague's meal. Very nice. Which is very nice, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. And a reward. Has, has that ever happened to you? Um, you know, I'm trying to think if it has. Yeah. I, I don't think it... I, I remember once finding um, a passport, uh, which was on, right. the, on the streets of Glasgow or yeah. something like that, uh, and I tried to hand it into the police station. Yeah, that can be a nightmare And, as well. and the police were very unhelpful. Exactly, yeah. You know, they yeah. basically said, oh, you'll have to bring it back at some other time. I know, it's because shocking. Because they said, that this is not the time to accept a part. I said, well, I'm, I'm on my way to work, you yeah. know. Why don't you just take it? And if somebody claims it, yeah, you can give it to them. Exactly. You know, and, and in the end, I just left it there. Yeah, well, you have and to. And they said, well, you can't leave it here. So and I'm I said, well, you know, it. it's now been lost and found in your place. Ex- I'm exactly. walking out. Exactly. But here's one from Bantam Bouncer. Yeah. He says, I found a copper's wallet with a warrant card money uh, in it as well. Golly. Uh, and the police staff asked for my address, and I also never got a thank you. Never a thank you at all? No. I'll tell you what happened to me once, and I fell out with a guy in the big style. He was a, uh, you know, in the old days when we worked in Fleet Street... A load of chauffeurs around. He used to drive editors yeah, around yeah. in, in um, Jags. Yeah. Usually Jaguars, sometimes those big Lexus cars or sometimes uh, Mercedes or mm. something. But uh, this guy, who I knew very well, 
uh, we met him at some do after work, you know what I mean? He wasn't working that day. He'd uh-huh. come in, it was somebody's leaving do or something, so yeah. he'd left the car at home and come in. And he, he told me this story he's boasting about, that he'd been in a, he'd been in a sort of cafe-type bar mm. with a mate of his near to where he lived, um, which was sort of on the edge of central London, if you see what I mean, you know. Um, on the edge of it? Yeah, like sort of Maida Vale or something oh, okay. like that, you see what I mean? Right. And there were some American tourists in this place, mm. right? And they got up to go, and a package slipped from the chap's belongings. Mm. And he was walking out towards the exit. Yeah. And this guy I'm talking about uh, walked over, because he'd seen it fall, picked it up, was about to indicate to the American tourist that he'd left something behind, yeah. when his fingers, the sensitive of his fingers, told him, hang on, this is money, right? Yeah. In a plastic wrap, like right. the one that we've just talked about. Okay. So he didn't say anything, and the American tourist left. He then came back to the table where his mate was. They unwrapped it, and there was a thousand dollars, US yeah. dollars. Right. And he and his mate split it and took it. Really? Yeah. And he told you this story. Yeah, he told me the story, and he told it me boastfully. He yeah. told me about, you know, wasn't that clever? You know, yeah. that's terrible. Yeah. What, he, if, especially if you know the guys. I mean, oh, one thing. I mean, if you absolutely. found a thousand dollars in the street um, in yeah. cash, yes, I could understand somebody saying, "Well, you know, you're supposed to yeah. add it into the police station." No. but they cannot always be that helpful. He knew who the owner of the money yeah, was. Yeah, that's not good. You know, and and morals and, of an alley cat scenario. Worse than that. Did you tell him off? Did you theft? Uh... I, I I said, why didn't you give it back to? Him? He said, well, you know, he says his fault, wasn't it? You know, was you know, he's rich American tourist. You know, he's, uh... I said that's terrible. That mm. is absolutely shocking. I'm sorry, I'm appalled by that story. That is just common theft, you mm. know. And uh, and to take advantage of somebody who didn't even know they'd lost it. But anyway, there you go. It it is it is one of those situations, you know, finding and losing things. Sometimes when you find things, you face the accusation. And this is what I thought about when I found this wallet. Yeah. I thought, now, I found that wallet, right? And the, and the owner of the place, the brew pot, had looked in it, and then, he, you know, we'd identified who it was. But years ago, when I was in... You can't uh, tell me another story. Look at the time. Rodeo Drive. Yeah. You know where that is? Yeah, I do. I lost Beverly my wallet Hills. there. I lost my wallet there, right? Yeah. And that night, for once, I'd put $200 in my wallet because I was in America and I knew I was going to need it for something else. Mm. I usually put money in my... Trouser pocket. Right. Um, just keep my cards in my wallet. The next day, without even knowing I'd lost it, because I'd take my coat off and put it over the back of a chair or something, got a phone call. And it was some guy in Pacific Palisades uh-huh. who said, our au pair found your wallet in Rodeo Drive last wow. night. I said, how did you know it was mine? He, unfortunately, it was a business card, and they'd rung the Daily Express in London, uh-huh. who then told them where I was, because right. you always left numbers in those days, you know? But when I went over to Pacific Palisades in a car, which cost about $60 each yeah. way, you know, a cab... And got the wallet, there was no money in it. Oh, really? And I couldn't accuse the, the au pair girl no. in front of me of taking well, it. it might not have been her that took well, it. Well, for all I know, somebody might have found it, picked it up, taken the money and thrown it yeah, off the floor again. Exactly. You know, so what do you do? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Amazing. Mm. Uh, right, uh, we're going to uh, take a little bit of a, a shift coming up next because Paul Olson's going to join us. He's a paleontologist Great. and author from Columbia University. Mm. So I want you to be nice to him. Uh, and not accuse him of wasting his life because uh, oh, no. uh, he's going to be not talking me. about a real life Jurassic Park. Great. This is Talk Sport. Talk Sport. Massive names in the world of sport and beyond. Oh, my days. He's going back away from goal and boom. David Beckham joins us again. To win your home games is what Sir Alex Ferguson always used to say to us. You know, you win your home games and then you get what you can on the road. And we were lucky enough to do that, obviously. Chris Kamara has joined us. Great to be in the company of legends as well. Thanks, Percy, <laughs> Alvin. <laughs> yourself of course. <laughs> Plus the biggest games and the biggest goals. Lukaku with his second of the night just stomped it in. What a comeback from Everton. Expect the unexpected on Talk Sport. You know what to do. You can tweet us at the yes. two mics. Or you can find us on Facebook uh, on the two mics as well. I'm uh, here to serve. Now, though, let's talk now, though, to a man uh, who is a paleontologist and author from Columbia University. It's Mr. Paul Olson. Indeed. Uh, he's going to tell us about this amazing discovery uh, of these ancient geckos found in Myanmar. Mm. Um, oh, we've just lost him. Uh, I'll come back to him in a minute. Do you know where yeah. Myanmar is? No, do you? You don't know where it is? No, you well, tell it's, me. It's sort of in Southeast Asia, isn't it? Uh, is it? Southeast yeah. Asia, yeah. Now, what's a gecko? Ancient uh, geckos. A gecko is like a lizard. Right. Oh, um, I see. In fact, when I was in uh, Mexico, uh, they have these iguanas, mm. you know, which can r- yes. vary in length from, you know, maybe about a foot to, you know, sometimes about two or three feet long. Yes. And uh, and uh, geckos are a sort of form of lizard. Right, which OK. Which is why this is very, very interesting. Okay. Because yeah. uh, what basically we're being told is that they were perfectly preserved. Do you remember the original Jurassic Park? Yes, of course. They found the dinosaur DNA right. inside the amber. That's right. So I think we've got Paul back now. Paul okay. Olsen. Very good morning to you, Paul. 
Good evening. Actually, good morning for you. Yeah, exactly yeah, right. Now, this is quite an extraordinary tale in a way, isn't it? Because uh, it, it does have many kind of uh, similarities to the, to the original Jurassic Park story. It does. Uh, these are beautifully preserved animals, preserved in a fossil type of natural plastic in which minute details of the soft tissue are preserved as well as the bones inside. And uh, they look basically like little lizards embedded in plastic. Right. Mm, and, and so, I mean, I, I suppose one of the obvious questions you would ask is, is does this prove, first of all, that geckos uh, haven't really changed that much over, over millions and millions of years? Well, the geckos are different species than alive now, but you wouldn't really recognize them as anything different. The fully formed geckos were already present uh, 100 million years ago, as were fully formed crocodiles and a lot of other creatures. Mm. Uh, they, they've changed their species. They're different kinds, but they look basically very, very similar. Right. OK, Paul. So the, the killer question in this one is that we've all seen Jurassic Park. It was all... You know, such a mystery in those days as to how this could ever happen. You find one little speck of DNA and you rebuild a dinosaur from it. Is that ever going to happen? And has it been taken a stage further by these latest discoveries? The short answer is no, it hasn't. Mm. The reason is the oldest DNA that's been recovered so far is about 700,000 years old Mm -hmm. from a horse. Right. Well, 700,000 years is less than 100 times younger than these Burmese amber fossils. What happens is that DNA naturally degrades and breaks down much faster Mm. than the form of the animal. So you're seeing the shape, but you're not seeing the actual molecular structure of the animal. That's altered. And it's destroyed, actually. It's like taking taking your flash drive Mm. and putting it inside an electromagnet. Mm. You know what happens to your flash drive? No. He doesn't even know what flash drive is, Paul. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> your little <laughs> stick that you stick in your computer. For exactly. Memory. I do know <laughs> what that is, Paul. Sure. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> and what would happen to that? It would wipe out the memory. Well, and memory. Yeah. That's what's happening. DNA to you, isn't it? is the memory of the code of living organisms. Yeah, right. So it gets wiped out through time. Mm. And there's nothing you can do to reconstruct it. Right. That said, the information is embedded in the multitude of living animals that still exist, especially mm. birds, which mm. are living dinosaurs after all. We, so, spoke, we spoke to a guy, Paul, about a, a few months back. Yeah. You may be familiar with him. He's up in somewhere like uh, Seattle, I think, or Oregon, mm. um, and he's a professor who's trying to uh, make some kind of a, uh, a sort of a freakish scientific mixture of a chicken and a dinosaur. Have you heard uh, about this guy? That's Jack Horner. In, that's in, him, yeah. Uh, yeah, in, in Montana. Oh, yeah. Montana, and, right, uh, yeah. What do you make of that? Well, I, it's... Um, Frankensteinish. It is. Yeah, uh, it, is, it is. Yeah, and 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 it won't be a, it won't be a, a a real dinosaur. I mean, birds are real dinosaurs that are alive today, but they're not what we call non-avian dinosaurs like a T. Rex. Yeah. You could breed uh, and alter genetically a living organisms to recover some mm. of the information that was lost. Uh, by suppression of that information in evolution. So, for example, human beings are occasionally born with a tail, Mm -hmm. right? That's, you know, we still carry the genetic information to produce a tail, and our embryos have tails, but that information is suppressed as we uh, mature as an embryo and finally born. Sometimes there's a mutation and that doesn't happen. Well, you could take organisms with these mutations that have what are called these atavisms. You uh, You could modify them allow that to be expressed, and you you could get something that looks like a non-bird dinosaur. Mm. But it isn't. Mm. It's a modern bird. I see. Nothing you do will bring back those ancient creatures. You can make a designer creature. Yeah. Out of a modern-day bird. Out of a modern-day bird. Yeah, I understand that. But how far back, how far back, Paul, can we go before the DNA has not been wasted in time, if you see what I mean? Yeah, that's not clear, but but it it looks like at at the best we can hope for a, f- a couple of million years. And, well, hang on, but um, we're talking about seven hundred thousand, weren't we? And you said that's far too right. um, far too that, long that's ago. That's the oldest so far. Right, I see. Yeah, I but that see. doesn't mean there isn't anything older. So I'm taking a guesstimate oh, I see. of uh, how yeah. old the oldest DNA might be. Now, of course, we could be wildly wrong, mm-hmm. and maybe there is some uh, minor fossilization miracle that's occurred preserving DNA. Yeah. Although one kind of scientifically, I can't imagine what the, how that would happen. Yeah. However. Uh, 
as as DNA degrades, there's still mm. bits of information hanging in there. Sure. And 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 uh, right now, there's no DNA at all known mm. from the age of dinosaurs. Zero, not even tiny fragments. Right. But if there were tiny fragments, reconstructing those to a full blown dinosaur would be exact, almost exactly the same as taking a modern bird and taking it backwards and making it a dinosaur. Mm, so yeah. it, it 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 you're really just building something. Uh, it's like taking tiny shards of pottery. When, you know, when you have a hundred of yep. the pot and then filling in the rest of the clay to make the pot. Sure. Well, it's not the pot. Yeah. Sure. But it's, yeah. but it's educationally worthwhile, I suppose, in terms of the mm. pot. I mean, is there, is there a, a, a sort of a school of thought within the, the scientific community that, that wants to try and, um, and, and kind of recreate a dinosaur just to kind of study it? Or is, is that thought of as a kind of freakish thing to do? Well, that's an aesthetic thing. You know, you, you might want, want to see a dinosaur just like you want, might want to meet Leonardo da Vinci. Um, but, you know, getting that is not the same thing as actually mm. being there or mm. seeing the real thing. It's right. just not. Mm. So I think it's a bit of a stunt, actually, mm. to be perfectly frank. And I like Jack very much, Jack Horner. But I, I really don't think this – learning – how to do it, learning about the structure of the DNA and the genetic code of modern birds, figuring yep. out how it works, mm. that's a different story. That's a very valuable thing. That's fundamental science. That's figuring out how living things work. Mm. But actually using that information to create a, uh, some, some creature mm -hmm. is a bit of a stunt. I mean, okay. eventually we may be doing that routinely. Mm. I don't know. That's an ethical decision. Mm. Yeah. Whether That's... we want to do that or not, not science. Ethics. Okay. Yeah, I would yeah. imagine after Jurassic Park and the mm. way that it all kind of played out, that mm. nobody would really want to do that. But Paul, thank you very much yeah, indeed. Thank Fascinating you. Fascinating stuff. Paul yeah. Olson, there, paleontologist and author mm. uh, from Columbia University. Mm. Uh, lots more coming up next on Talk Sport. Make sure you're ahead of the game and listen to Kick Off on Talk Sport with 888 Sport. Bet you can. Tonight from 7, we get in-depth analysis, heavyweight pundit opinion and outspoken fan reaction on the nation's most passionate pre-match football forum. You won't miss a trick, flick or kick of any of the action. Plus, hear the latest form and odds ahead of all the matches that matter from 888 Sports on the ball, bet spurt. Kick Off, weeknight from 7 on Talk Sport with 888 Sport. Bet you can. Please gamble with Responsibly. Here in the urban jungle, we see two impressive specimens, the agile MG3 and the larger MG6. And now you can explore MG with offers including free insurance, interest-free credit, great part exchange and free weekends away. See mg.co.uk slash offers. Free insurance is underwritten by Allianz Insurance PLC. MG 3 and 6 finance subject to status. 18s and over. Financed by MG. 0% representative APR. Terms and conditions apply. Visit mg.co.uk for details. On the surface, this is a great Sky TV bundles offer. But dig deeper and you'll discover much more. Join today from £20 a month and you'll get a free Samsung Tab E. There's also unmissable drama on Sky Atlantic, including crime epic The Tunnel Sabotage. Hurry, offer ends March 17th. Search Sky Bundles. Sky. Believe in better. Direct debit, subject to status. Upfront £10 standard setup. Minimum contract and further terms apply. Inspire the next generation of young fans and celebrate the spirit of the game on Talk Sport with Barclays, championing the true spirit of the game. Listen throughout the day for the chance to win a pair of tickets to take a young fan to their very first Barclays Premier League match. Win an unforgettable experience that will last a lifetime. Play first games on Talk Sport with Barclays, championing the true spirit of the game. For full terms and conditions, go to talksport.com slash competitions. Talk Sport. He finds the corner of the net. Extraordinary stamina, energy and skill. Get your tickets now. Talk Sport. Crazy. But that's how it goes. Millions of people living as hobos. And yeah, but maybe it's not too late. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics, and uh, Ask Porky's coming up in a little while, of course. So uh, there's a whole array of questions on all sorts of different mm -hmm. things. Yes. Uh, ben says uh, Porky sounded bored and confused during that whole interview. No, no, I didn't at all. I was trying to get to the heart of the matter, as uh, I always do. You right. know, the idea of uh, of uh, rebuilding dinosaurs from 100 million years ago is mm. so preposterous. Yes, but we're all taken away by the Jurassic Park film, aren't we? Yeah, well, indeed. Yeah. How about this one? Yeah, uh, which doesn't have a name on it, but it's texted into 81089. Uh, yeah. Ray the ancient lizard and the possibility of taking its DNA. 
to recreate a copy, uh, mm. but it would have degraded over time. Does that mean I could cut off a tip of my pinky with its live DNA and have it used to recreate me? Well, the funny thing is, you can take a bit of your liver and put it in a laboratory now and create more of that liver, can't you? Uh, if, if what you mean, they can grow another liver yes, around it. Sort yes, of thing. yes. So I believe. Yes, so yeah. I believe. I mean, I don't know that, but I mean, you know, working very closely at hand with some of the world's top cardiothoracic um, well, I mean, experts. These are, these are all mates of yours. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well, Why don't you not get mates. One of them on the show. No, not mates. Not mates. I have access to them because I mean, of my if condition. Dr. Banner won't come on. Can mm. you not get one of his underlings to do? Well, so? they don't do it. You see, these medical guys are not in it for the publicity. They're in it for service. Yeah, they don't want anybody to know how little, to how little work they do for so no, much no. money. No, no, see, no. The old junior no, doctor's got a no, strike again. Are they really? Yeah, in the morning. Well, who are they? No, these you're not keeping up with the news. These guys I deal with are not junior doctors, believe me. They are consultants, you know. They're yeah, some they're of the not, they don't need to go on strike. Sorry? They don't need to go on strike. Well, funny enough, most of their work is done within the NHS and mm. they're not paid anything like the sort of money that private uh, medicine gets paid or well, American doctors. Did you doctors. not tell me the story of when you went to see this guy Yeah, and there was a massive, uh, what was it, Bentley or something outside? No, he had a four-door Ferrari. I've never seen a four-door, a four-door Ferrari yeah, before. A Ferrari? Well, yeah. I, don't think, I don't think he's doing most of his work on the NHS then. No, hang on, this was not, don't get confused, this was not... Um, I'm trying not to get confused. Dr. Banner, this was, this was a consultant. I went to see in his private rooms at oh, Wimbledon. Right. Oh, okay. He subsequently, by the way, got struck off. <laughs> because, yeah, because uh, it was alleged that he was doing things like, seriously, uh, every time a patient walked through the door, you mm. know, oh, you know, you're chronically ill, mm. and he'd ship him off to a private hospital, right. and he was taking the percentage of the, um, you know, the cut from oh, the really? insurance company oh, uh, profits. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of that that goes on, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there's an awful lot of it. These yeah. doctors get flown around the world. Yeah to various uh, conferences by drug companies. Is that right? Because yeah. if they can then influence whatever yes. the health uh, health um, trust that they work for to exactly. buy the drugs from this particular company, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. an awful lot of money in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, I'm sure there is. Mm. It's, uh, now, it's, a couple it's of people have, yeah. uh, have, have messaged you, Ray, okay. the pie situation. Right. right? Um, because it turns out, uh, says uh, Jeff the Gritter Driver, Jeff tell Paul it's driver. National Pie Week. Rimswell Bakers in Stockton on Tees selling three pies for two pounds all week. Really? He says top pies are blinding value. Oh, right, OK. Well, I, I can believe it. Now, bizarrely, yeah. uh, here's one from uh, uh, Matt in Bristol. Right. Uh, he says, Porky is right, but also you are right. Uh, pie Minster pies make a pie called Chicken of Aragon. Oh, well, thank chicken you. chicken and tarragon. Thank you. Well, hang on. I don't know whether you had that. No, mine was chicken of arrogant, definitely. So you're oh. mocking me and telling no, me no. it's tarragon. No, it was arrogant. No, you said it was chicken and arrogant. Chicken, not, well, it was chicken of arrogant. chicken of arrogant. It was chicken of arrogant. So it was a pie minster pie. No, it was made, it was homemade pie made in well, the brew pot. In, cool. in... No, well, it wouldn't be called that. Well, it, I, this I'm is a particular sure... brand name. I'm sure that's what they did call it. No, this is a brand I'm sure, name. I'm sure that's what they did pie call it. Pie Minster Pies only. You seem to be obsessed by the pie thing. Uh, listen, I'll tell you what I want to talk to you about. Go on, then. You know, since War and Peace. Hey, eh? War and Peace. Was what, the it... book? It was a TV series made in six episodes, yes, right? And I didn't see any of it. Well, I did, and I was great and all that. Do you know, since that has happened, mm. and now people are finding that more and more TV series have been based on books, famous books, yeah. like Laurie Lee's Sided with Rosie. Yes. You remember that? Yeah, that was, that, was on a mo- that was a movie, wasn't it? No, it was a series was again. It? it was a TV series. Was it? Yeah. Oh, I missed that yeah. as well. Yeah, Rosie, War and Peace, um, you know, all the great classic books. Apparently now, most people, 90% of people now... If they're asked, have you read the book, lie and say yes. Yeah. Because apparently, I mean, for instance, uh, George Orwell's 1984, which is a very long book, it's uh, got nearly 340 pages, apparently. That's not that long. Is, uh, have you not read it? Yeah, I've read it, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a book that most people brag about and say that they uh, they have read it from cover to cover until they're asked what happened to Winston Smith in Room 101. Yeah. The only... Uh, well, what does happen to him in Room 101? Uh, well, nothing. Nothing? There's nothing in the room. Uh-huh. Have you read the book? I read it a long time ago. Oh, well, there you go, you see, you've forgotten. Now, the Lord of the Rings, everybody claims... I have not read Lord of the Rings. Everybody claims to have read Lord of the Rings trilogy. No. I've read The Hobbit. I read The Hobbit when I was a kid. No, I've tried to read The Hobbit and I've tried to read Lord of the Rings. I find them unreadable. Can't read them, Okay. Have you got them, though? Eh? Have you got them, though? A lot of people, I have, might have. A lot of people have. have books yeah, in their yeah. house, but they haven't actually read them. No, you're, abso- you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I'm, I'm, I might have it. But um, the, the, the problem is that people now find that they don't want to be exposed to being ignorant mm. and uh, lacking in, you know, social graces. Yes. And people even claim to have read every Charles Dickens book. David Copperfield, Bleak House, Great Expectations, Oliver Twist. Yeah. All in the top 20 of books that most people claim to have read. Really? Unbelievable. I've never read a Harry Potter book either. Uh, no, I haven't. No. My kids I... love them, though. Do they? Yeah. Uh, makes you wonder, though, doesn't it? Why? Well, because it, it says this survey that was done 
the television adaptation of the Russian epic War and Peace prompted uh, surveys of people who've read books. Most people fib or tell lies about the books they've read. An <laughs> online survey of 2,000 people says they just don't believe them because when they ask about the plot of the book, people yeah. can't tell them. Right. Isn't that amazing? Well, that doesn't make any uh, doesn't make any more surprising news to me than uh, the new line about uh, various other things. Seventeen percent of respondents also admitted they were lying uh, when asked a second time if they really had read the book they said they've just read. Yeah. So people are shameless about it. Yeah. Have they you read Alice are. in Wonderland? So have you read nineteen eighty four? I've read nineteen eighty four. Are you lying? No. <laughs> Definitely not. Have you read Alice in Wonderland? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I think I have. I remember the white rabbit and all that do disappearing you? down the rabbit hole. Yes, I do. You yeah. sure don't just remember the cartoon? And going through the uh, through the looking glass. That was a different book, wasn't it? There were two books. Hey? There was Alice uh, in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass. Really? There were two. Yeah, I read them both. OK. Becky says this, I'm yeah. not proud and I won't lie. I have or never will read Rooney Tunes or an awful lot of bubbly in Brazil. Oh, that's very nice, hashtag, isn't it? Thank you very much indeed. not classics. Well, 100,000 people uh, read um, There's an awful lot of bubbly in Brazil. Mm. Bestseller. Yeah. Sunday Times well, that's because list it was a, and all that. Well, that's because it was about Alan Brazil. Uh, no, it was because it was a great book, to Is be that honest. that right? Very well written, yeah. Very yeah. well written. Oh, yes. The sky was inky black. Well, it was, wasn't it? You know, well, I don't know. Well, I wasn't there. Well, I, I wasn't either. Al was there and he described that to me and that's why I read Wrote down, okay. Mm. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it. Good. Uh, how's one from just one from G the Spark? Yep. Uh, Mike, do you get paid danger money for working with such an idiot? <laughs> he's talking about me, about you. No, he's, or he's, you about me. It's addressed to me. I think. Oh, really? I yeah. don't think so. Yeah. Well, normally people address you as Porky. Yes. In order to differentiate the two mics. Yeah, I suppose so. Is that not right? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, mm. but you know, people don't really turn their attentions to the frailties of your. Uh, personality and your character in the way they should. Yeah. Sam says, any chance we can have an expert explain what a flash drive is, where I can get one, and will it work with my electromagnets? Uh, yeah. That's very good. I couldn't understand why he mentioned electromagnet. Well, I know what a flash drive is. What is a flash well, drive? It's, it's like a memory stick, isn't it? Well, that's what he told you. Yeah, exactly. You didn't know what it was I did, I did, that. I did. I have you got that. a flash drive? No. Why not? What do I need it for? Well, I mean, if you had some information or data that you wanted to state, carry no. around with you. No. Instead of carrying around you. Yeah, my laptop's knackered, by the way. Uh, Did I tell you about that? Well, I think you've, you've kind of mentioned it. Yeah. Why don't you get a new one? Well, I think I'm going to get a new one. Yes. Because, I mean, the amount of money that they want for me to get it fixed yeah. is almost half the price of, of what it costs to buy. Is that right? So, yeah. I mean, because, you yeah. know, I, mean, I just bought one for the kids, funnily enough. I thought that for, you for, didn't uh, use a laptop much because you've got a well, tablet. Well, I don't. Well, I don't really. Yeah. Um, so, what do you need a new one well, for? I'm, then? Well, I'm sort, of, I'm sort of contemplating whether I need to get one. Not I mean, really Make your mind appear, can you? Well, I'm just exploring mm. the subject, yeah, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, I know that it has yeah. nothing to do with you, so therefore you're not interested. Yeah. But, I mean, I store all my mm. pictures on it, for example. Yes. I store, yeah. you know, videos and stuff that I make of the kids. Pictures? Pictures, all the pictures I take. Yeah, I store uh, them all on my computer, because oh, otherwise, okay. otherwise, you know, after a while you have to erase them off your phone, because the phone gets full up. No, it doesn't. never gets full up. Well, it doesn't, because you don't take any pictures. I, I, I do. When I was do. the last picture you took? Uh, took a picture of the boat, didn't I, last weekend? OK, so it's one picture over the whole weekend. Yeah, so uh, what? You want to know how many pictures I took over the weekend? No, I couldn't care less how you many you took. You couldn't care less, no. well, I'm going to tell you, because yeah. people often say to me, why does Porky never put out any pictures of what he does? I do. And you don't. I do. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, mm. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 24 pictures I took over the weekend. Well, Why? What do you mean, why? Who's interested in your 24 well, take, pictures for the pictures, weekend? I'm taking pictures of the dog, I'm taking pictures of the kids. What do you do with these pictures? Well, it's just nice to have pictures of the people that are around you. I what, know you so haven't you got anybody at, around so you. So you can look at them all the time? Well, no, but How I mean... How ridiculous is that, honestly? I, I, I like to look at pictures of my children, yeah. Is that so weird? No, that's all right, that's I like fine. to look at pictures of my dog. Is yeah, that so right. strange? All right, but I mean, I don't know what you do with 24 pictures. I thought one would have done, to be honest. One? Yeah. Because, you know, you take all these pictures and then start sending them out. People are going to wonder why you're boring them to death. Yeah, no, they want to know what you're up to, and you still haven't answered the question of what you do with the hours and hours and hours that you claim uh, to spend not drinking during the day. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> we are the two mics. Hey, listen up. Talk Sport is starting a family, which is good news for you. Here's what you're going to get. Talk Sport 2, the prodigal son. Life Sport, big sport, extra sport 24-7, better bing. Two, you get Talk Radio, the soul brother from the same mother. Current affairs, showbiz, and shalala. Capiche? Free. Look who's just walked in back from the war. Your twisted sister, Virgin Radio. 
you're gonna think you were born with a silver spoon. Because all you gotta do is retune your DAB radio. How about that? Find out how at talksport.com slash retune. Bobby. Hey, why don't you be a wise guy and join Talk Sports new family? Or we'll come around and we'll whack it. It's gonna be a good summer. I can feel it in my gut. It's a family affair. Now go home and get your DAB radio. There's letter drops in Hyde Park for his Russian masters. Uh, not at all. I mean, the point is... You are is, a bit more of an old-fashioned type. I mean, you write yeah, letters, am, yeah. send cards, that Yeah, I kind do, of thing. yes. Yeah, I do. You I, don't, I, you don't, you're, not, you're not up with all this kind of electronic communication, are you? Well, it depends what you mean by up with. I send emails to people. No, well, no, that's you not do. a problem, OK? No, but you still are kind of old-fashioned in the way that you uh, Well, I think it's an old-fashioned courtesy. I mean, uh, uh, the trouble is with a lot of electronic um, information, it can be hacked, it can be taken off you, it can be lost, mm. and all that kind of stuff. If you've got it in writing, if you've got it in files and... Documents and well, that's one of the things about my computer, right? One of the things, if I do decide Absolutely. to buy a new computer, yeah. what I'll have to do is get the guys who are looking at it at the moment yes. to take all the current stuff off it, yes. put it on an out, you know, uh, an external hard drive, yeah. so that I've got everything from that particular computer. Because yeah. if I don't get it fixed, I can't fire it up in order to get the information out of it. No, that's the uh, that's the big problem. That's yeah. what I mean. You you find these electronic sort of blockages, which mm. are sometimes unfathomable, unfathomable, unfathomable yeah. uh, even to experts. Listen, yeah. what about this report that we were talking about just now? One in Ten of us down our maximum weekly booze limit in one day. Yes. Some 2.5 million sink more than 14 units in a session, equivalent to around six pints of beer. Really? Yeah. Well, I suppose that's what a lot of people do. I mean, if you, for example, are going out uh, to watch football uh, of an afternoon yes. uh, or of an evening, uh, six pints, for probably for most people who've gotten to watch the football, is not very much, really, No, it? it's not. I mean, you would drink maybe, what, two or three before the game, maybe a couple afterwards? Yeah. I, you know, I agree. It, like uh, makeup of your body changes, yeah. but beer, it doesn't have any effect on me in right. terms of the change of metabolism. In do you my not body. get to a point though with beer where you just can't drink any more? Yeah, then I, I don't do. drink, and then, then I go home or do something. You? Yeah, I don't take to the you wine. Don't move then. over. No, well, it depends what. <coughs> excuse me, it depends what sort of situation you're in. But I mean, I, I totally agree with you. The age the uh, uh, breakdown on this right mm. is that they say that those who drink most. Uh, you know, drink these six pints at once. Yeah. Uh, like age between 16 and 24. Right. Well, I, so I, if they're age between 16 and 24, the, two, the first two years of that, they shouldn't be drinking at all. No, exactly. Effectively. But to be perfectly honest, uh, I don't I don't believe that. I, I drink... I'd probably drink more... I'd probably drunk more, I would say, in my 30s than any other time in my life. Because that was when you had money, though, as well. I had money. You, you, you'd you come to terms with, you know, what your drink limits were and, and you know, you'd sort of... I don't take much notice of health warnings about drink because my experience... Well, do you know why? Because they've, made, they've come out with so many over the years. Yeah. And the most recent one from, the, from this new kind of chief medical officer... Yes. ...woman, whose name I forget... Yes. ...um... Uh, which is basically you shouldn't drink anything at all. Yeah. I mean, after a while, people just take just switch off and they go, well, you know what? These warnings are ridiculous. Yeah, but not only that, you and I have experienced so many people over the years who've been lifelong drinkers yeah. and who don't appear to be dying. You know what I mean? No. They just they just uh, it's their lifestyle and they just go. Well, I do. I mean, a lot of the people that we talk about that you used to yeah. work with, of course, have died. Sorry, a lot of the people that we talk about that you've known and I've known yeah. over the years from Fleetwood who were big drinkers have yeah. died. Not sure they died of drink though. I'm no. sure I, they maybe died. Maybe not. Died. Did you see that other statistic? It was, was a that? fascinating one from Scotland, where yes. apparently five percent of people who drink in Scotland drink fifty yeah. percent of the booze. Which yeah, well, is that consumed. wouldn't surprise me. And in England, it's ten percent. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all because uh, there are some people who. Like six pints, eight pints, six pints plus... Like every night. I mean, if you drank yeah, six whiskeys. or eight pints every night, yeah. that's not a great idea. No, you'd have a problem. Yeah. You'd have, I'd drink hardly anything between Monday and Friday. Yeah. Hardly anything. Me too. In, in fact, in it'd fact, be very rare for me to have a drink on those days, and then maybe only one day at the weekend. Yeah. Talking about lifestyles and all that, by the way, yeah. you know there's a, a new, um, there's a new book out called The Miracle Morning... And it advocates exactly what I've told you should you should do uh, over the years. Uh-huh. Get up at four thirty every morning. Well, I don't get up at four thirty. I'm already up. Yeah, I know. What I'm saying is, <laughs> if uh, you know, if what I'm saying is, if if we had a normal routine lifestyle, yeah. which we may have in the future, and go back to working, say, you know, a normal sort of day or yeah. something like that, right. you should always get up at four thirty. Why? It's the best part of the day between four thirty and six yeah, thirty. I mean, Your that, body's at its best well, then. That, that, yeah, but that's everybody fine. should do this. Yeah, but what's, it depends what you do at four thirty, though, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, well, what are you going to do at four thirty in the morning in the middle of winter when it's dark? Well, you get on with life. Well, what do you mean get on with life? Well, here, one example here. From 
from this book. This book is called The Miracle Morning, OK? Yeah. Um, and they've gone and spoke to people who changed their lifestyle to get them up at 4.30. Right. One, one person interviewed says, I've been waking up at 4.30 and the difference has made to my life, my health and my productivity is nothing short of a miracle. Mm. It sounds evangelical. Uh, ask any early riser and you'll get similarly annoying uh, to the uninitiated degree of enthusiasm about the benefits of the morning routine. Overachieving early risers include Barack Obama, Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow and US Vogue editor Anna Winter. And and it is, honestly, it, it is... You know what you get in that early morning piece? What do you get? That early morning two hours? First of all, you get silence or meditation, which is absolutely vital to the well-being of your mind. You get affirmation, right? Yeah. Affirmation being that, you know, you're up and about instead of lying in bed doing nothing. Yeah. You get visualisation... OK? Visualisation Visualisation. What? Uh, what, well, what you well, do it's is... dark, isn't it? No, you envisage positive things in your mind. Oh, really? OK? Well, I don't need to do that. You can exercise without fear or favour for just ten minutes, OK? Uh-huh. Without getting in the way of yeah, things like... At, yeah, but if you get up at 4.30... Breakfast and all that, yeah. You need to go to bed at, say, 10.30 at night. Uh, yeah, OK, what's wrong with that? Well, it's too early. No, rubbish. You see, I think there are people who are more night-type people yeah. and people who are more early-morning-type people. And I'm yeah. very much... My father was very much an early-morning person. Yeah. Uh, and many people I've known in the, over the years are yes. early morning people. Yes. But I'm very much not. I'm very much a late night person. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm I'd early much morning. Rather, I'd much rather stay up until 4.30 than go to bed. No, no, not me. That's, that, that's, that's, that's a waste of your life. No, it isn't. Right. Reading inspirational material such as biographies is something you can do in the early hours between 4.30 and 6.30. you do you like in the early hours. Yeah. And the other, the last thing Depends is... Depends as well who you're living with as And well. the last, last thing is, and I've told you about this before, to practice that I, uh, I endorse, uh, scribing i.e. writing up your diary for the day. Yeah. For the day before. What did you write in the diary for yesterday? Yesterday? Uh, give yourself a mark. Yes, I did, yes. What did you get? Uh, about uh, eight yesterday. I felt uh, <laughs> I'd achieved a lot. Uh, I find that amazing. You must bring this diary in. What? You know, like the diary of Adrian Mole, no. aged 65 and a half. No, not at all. I gave myself an eight out of ten. Do you have no idea how ridiculous that sounds? No. No, it doesn't sound ridiculous at all. Why give shouldn't you set a targets mark. for yourself? You give yourself a mark. Out of no, ten, no. for your performance every day. No, no, no. I, I, I don't know how you can't see that if you want to really um, compare one day to the next, you mm. can't just go on, uh, going to bed, getting up, doing the day, going to bed, getting up. You have to evaluate each day against the other. Yeah, but what's Otherwise, the point? there's no point. Well, no, but what's the point unless you do anything about it? I mean, do you give yourself an assessment at the end of the year? No, but to I... see whether or not you deserve a pay rise? No, not, of course I don't, you idiot. But what I do do is, I, I don't think... I do to call me an idiot, just because I've asked you a question. Well, because Nobody you say stupid questions. things like giving myself a pay rise. You know, I, I draw as much money as I want from whatever source I want. I draw to, money. Yeah, yeah. I I draw do. money. Well, what, well, where do you get your money from, then? Do you not draw your money? I don't draw money, no. No, what do you do? Well, that sounds like such a ridiculously no, Victorian way of speaking. Well, where do you get your money from? Uh, well, I spend my money in a variety of ways. Yeah, where do you get it from? Well, I get it from a bank. So you draw it out of the bank? No, I don't draw it out of the bank. Of course you bank. do. No, I don't. Of course you do. No. If you put a, cut, a piece of plastic in a yeah. wall and tap some numbers, yeah. when that money comes out, you're drawing the money out. Is that right? Yes. OK. Yeah. If you say so. Yeah. So why are you, why are you cont- constantly what trying I, to... What if I use a contactless card? What am I doing then? When, when you constantly eh? try to mock and deride, you know... What the, am I doing? The, the when, way when, I... Well, hang on. What am I, I doing? Talk about life. What am I doing when I'm using a contactless card? You're paying. So not drawing. You're paying. But the effect is the same. The money still comes out of the bank account. You're, you're, you're paying. I, I just said to you I draw as much money as I want because I make provisions for the amount of money I want to spend. I just don't go around recklessly flashing my card <laughs> at contactless uh, points of delivery. Well, you can't be too reckless. You know, you spend up to 30 quid. Well, sometimes. Depends what sort of uh, no, day I'm having, what sort of mood I'm in. No, I mean, as a, as a contactless card, you can't spend yeah. more than 30 quid in one transaction. I, hard, I hardly ever use it. I think it's such a dangerous um, uh, principle. Dangerous. Oh, dangerous, yeah. Yeah. Dangerous beyond belief. Really? How do you know that card doesn't, you know, click twice it instead doesn't. of once? Well, because they give you a receipt. Uh, I don't know about that. No. I've seen... You're, I've like, seen, you're like one of those guys... Seen some dodgy that, practices. That's frightened of his own image on a camera. It's honestly. No, you no. Know, like one of these no, guys no. from one of the lost tribes. Yeah. This is Talk Sport. To celebrate the launch of the new Toolstation catalogue, we're playing New Kicks on the Block on Talk Sport. All this week from one with Hawksby and Jacobs. You'll get 45 football seconds to answer as many silky skilled questions on Euro 2016 first timers and international newbies to win a top flight Milwaukee compact drill twin pack every day. Sorted. Listen up and play new kicks on the block all this week from Wad with Holtzby and Jacobs on Talk Sport with Toolstation. Find your nearest branch at toolstation.com. 
Sergeant, why have you brought the chaps to a Fiat professional dealership? You said quick march, sir. Yes. There's an offer on Fiat Doblo and Furino vans in March. And quick? Only 31 days in March, sir. Clock's ticking. Sergeant, I really don't think we can... Three years warranty and three years roadside assistance. Yes, that is rather good. Three years servicing for just £99 and a £300 prepay card for fuel too. Don't bother walking back. You grab a Doblo. I'll take a Fiorino. Quick march to your local Fiat professional dealership now. Mileage limitations apply. For full TNCs, visit fiatprofessional.co.uk. Peggy 18. When our city started to collapse, the dark side of humanity took control of the streets. The most realistic and terrifying version of the apocalypse trusted reviews. Our mission is to save what remains. The Daily Star said the division is big, bold, and beautiful. We are the division. Tom Clancy's The Division. Out now on Xbox One. Get new content first on Xbox. Party power complaints. What's this I hear about your incredible Cheltenham offer being available to everyone, even Riff Raff? You mean this offer? Money back as a free bet if your horse finishes second in all races at Cheltenham. That's every single race, every single day. Yes, but surely not for the great unwashed too. Whoa, do they get to enjoy the scent of their own box? Mm, no, I suppose they don't. You're right. Thanks, Paddy Power. Yo, welcome. Win and win part of each way, single bets only. Max free bet £25, valid for seven days. Stake not included in winnings. TNC supply, 18 plus gambleaware.co.uk. An attack has decimated the British capital. What do you want? London descending into chaos. This March, London will fall, and a hero will rise. Stay with me. We'll get you out of here. Gerard Butler, Aaron Eckhart, and Morgan Freeman. Get down! Don't miss the sequel to Olympus Has Fallen. Oh, my God. London Has Fallen, in cinemas now, rated 15. Tomorrow night from 6, Europa League football, live on Talk Sport. Perfect timing! Join Mark Saggers for full match commentary of Borussia Dortmund versus Spurs. Spurs have the lead! Followed by extended updates of Liverpool's clash with Manchester United. That could be the winner! Europa League football, live on Talk Sport. With Arnold Clark. Test drive a new 16 plate this weekend and get a free £25 restaurant voucher. The Alan Brazil Sports Breakfast. There's so many great highs in football, but there's so many... Yeah, yeah I really want to take you. Yeah. Aruba, Jamaica, I really want to take you. Yeah, I'll take you. Anyway, listen, that was the also the song that was featured in... Uh, the Tom what's her name uh, film uh, Tom who cocktail you Tom know Tom Cruise Tom Cruise Tom Cruise Tom yes. what's her name -er? Tom Cruise have you had any sleep today yes I haven't had any sleep anyway listen the reason I'm playing that it's very sad actually why the guy who invented terrible film by the way uh, I haven't seen it you haven't seen no, cocktail I'm, no I haven't seen cocktail no. why not it, 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 it appealed to me with, you know, very little enthusiasm. Mm. The guy standing behind a bar shaking a few cocktails. But anyway, look, what I was going to say to you was the world's first mixologist, mm. the, the word was invented for, was a man called Dick Bradsell. Oh, yeah. Dick Bradsell was the cocktail king and godfather of the revolution that began in London in the trendy watering holes in the 1980s, you know, as the Reagan-Thatcher era expanded and right. uh, the Big Bang happened in the city. It spread across the globe via the bartenders uh, of all nations. Mm. It started at the Zanzibar Club in Covent Garden. OK. Do you know that? I did, I did used to go there, I think. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it was the first trendy I bar... I think it's in the sort of in the square. It's in the square, OK, yeah, yeah right. And, and uh, it was the first training bar for young people which opened late and served cocktails. Yeah. A guy called Dick Bradsell was the cocktail barman there mm. uh, and he started inventing great drinks for all these sort of um, yuppies who were coming in, you yeah. know, with pockets full of money right. from the Big Bang in the city and uh, founded, you know... Well, it was the beginning of the death of the pub, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose extent, it was. You know? Yeah, When yeah. pubs had to then start going off and making food for people because yeah. people were going to these cocktail bars and having sort of uh, spending yep. lavish amounts of money. Yep. They didn't really fancy the idea of, you know, standing at a bar and going, can I have a gin and tonic, please? That's right. ice with that. That's right. You know, and then yeah. they give you one ice cube. One ice cube and a, and a piece of withered lemon. Yeah, right. And uh, and warm tonic. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, look... Well, I just remember I came back from America first. Yes. 
I used to when I was going into bars because of the amount of liquor they used to give you That's right. in the in the bars in America. Mm. I used to drink quadruple vodkas. Yeah, right. Because yeah. it was the only way just to, to keep get, up. Yeah. Well, no, just to get the amount of vodka that I'd been used to no, drinking. That's right. Yeah. If you're a vodka and tonic in New York. Oh, I you totally know, agree. It's at least a, a, a triple or a quadruple measure. Oh, I totally agree. Because they just used to pour it in. If yeah. they liked you, you got a lot, and if they didn't, you didn't. If you tipped them nicely, the time last time you were in, you got quite a lot. And uh, I used to drink tank and tonic. Mm. You know, and half the glass was full of tank. Yeah, tank right. Gin. Right. Uh, but anyway. Anyway, look, poor old Dick Bradsell, I'm afraid, has passed away. Oh, has he? And, uh, but he's left a legacy mm. of, of some of the most popular cocktails we drink these days. Such as? Well, um, some of them have become ubiquitous. For instance, he invented one called the Vodka Espresso. Right. Vodka Espresso, also known as the Espresso Martini, which is a mix of vodka, Tia Maria, Kahlua, yeah. and fresh coffee. OK. Dude, why would you put coffee in a cocktail? Yeah, I don't for? fancy that. Anyway, the espresso martini was invented in the early 1980s for a very well-known American model who asked him to make her a drink that would first wake me up and then completely mess me up. Uh, <laughs> Bradsell espoused bartender customer uh, confidentiality yeah. uh, with the solemnity of the confessional and never revealed who she was. Oh, right. Another creation was the International Rescue. That was his cocktail. Something to do with Thunderbirds. Well, you would think so. It says it was made with tequila, tomato juice, lime, orange, and a dash of whatever gave you the hangover. Mm. There was also another one called the Wibble. Okay. And it was called the Wibble because it would make you wobble, but you don't fall down. Mm. Uh, The Times commissioned an official cocktail in the 1990s, you know, for some particular anniversary. Yeah. It was Brad Sull to whom the paper turned. He came up with the Thunderer. Yes. I've always called the Times a Thunderer, well, of course. The world's just, most famous it's not newspaper. just you calls it that. It's been called that by many people. Yeah. It was a, it was a delicately blended poison of uh, Stolichnaya vodka, yeah. Parfait Amour and Creme de Mior with flavours of violets, anise and blackberry. All right. The best don't drink... I like the sound of that. It was called the best drink ever invented. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and that place, I don't think... I, I'm not sure if it's still there, Zanzibar. Is it still there? Did they say that? I don't know. I can't remember the last time I was in Covent Garden to see if it was still there. I don't think it is. But he said, uh, whether he was serving pop stars, models, or, you know, famous people, Soho Lushes or Trannies, um, he... Uh, ooh, ooh, he said, being... What's, what's, what's your... <laughs> the way you're reading. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, being polite to the customer was more important than mm. the cocktail you were serving them. Absolutely right. And that was the other change. Yeah. I'm sure I've told you that story before where I came back uh, uh, to London for a trip. I can't yes. remember why. And I was in Fleet Street, funnily enough, and had been for a curry somewhere. Right. I decided to go for a drink in that pub that used to be down uh, on the corner by... Um, uh, not the Albion, but it was one. Where like, was this? At uh, the bottom of Fleet Street. Bottom and, of Fleet and sort of Street. Gate Hill. Uh, the Punch. It was. It was. I don't think it was the Punch. It was the one sort of just right on the corner, which is still there. I think it's uh, kind of it's more at the bottom of Fleet Street on the right. Yeah, it's more on on the on the yeah. on the street that goes over Blackfriars Bridge. It is the Punch because the no, the Punch is a little bit further up. No, the Bell is the one. No, the Bell is further up as well. The Bell, the Punch, There's and then the, punch, and the, the Albion. One, the Albion. Maybe it was the Albion. The Albion. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. went in, and because I'd been drinking, you know, a lot of brandy over in uh, the States, yes. and I used to drink Hennessy XO. Yes. Just not because I was, you know, particularly snobbish about it. It was just because mm. it was very nice. Right. And it was available everywhere. You know? Okay. And I went into this bar mm. after it was about ten o'clock at night, mm. and I said to the guy behind the bar, "Have you got any, you know, got any brandy?" Yeah. And he kind of pointed, you know, at the, <laughs> at the optic up behind his head, and yes. there was a bottle of Cavoisier there. Yes. And I said, without wishing to sound in any way yuppie-ish, mm. I said, "Is that the only one you've got?" Mm. And he went, what's the matter? Is it not good enough for you? <laughs> yeah, really. And I said, well, actually, no, it's not. Have yeah. you got any Hennessy XO? Mm. No, we don't sell that here. Mm. And I just went, well, you know what? And I said a, a word that I'm not going to repeat, yeah. and I just walked out of the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, well, this is why. Exactly. Uh, you know, people who come to London pubs from America yeah. wonder what is going on. Well, the, wor- the worst, uh, the very worst thing was when I worked in, in Fleet Street, was in those days, they still have the licensing laws, and at, on a Sunday... You know, you'd have to get out at midday yeah. because the bar, the bar shut at, at two. Yeah. yeah, and shut at two. Yeah, I mean, it didn't for us because we always had lock-ins and uh, mm. and afters and all that kind of stuff. But uh, for instance, funny enough, it was, I think it was the uh, the punch. Mm. So we went across the road there. We could always get into the popping jar and stay there all afternoon if yeah. we wanted. You right. know, you had a bit of work to do on a Sunday, but not a lot usually. And uh, and going to punch and. You know, it would be one minute to two. We think, right, drink a beer, fellas. We'd go across the road to the popping jar, you know, for the lock in. Right. 
And the worst and the most embarrassing thing was a group of Americans coming in at one minute to two yeah. and saying, and oh, hi, guys, and all that, you know, you know, settle down for lunch and some cocktails. And they said, no, I'm sorry, we're closed. <laughs> and they'd say, I'm sorry, what do you mean, you're yeah. closed? Well, we're closed. We have licensing law this. We're closed to... And the Americans just couldn't get yeah. their head around it at no, all. No, no. I don't blame them. Well, it was totally ridiculous. It was shocking. Totally ridiculous. Absolutely shocking. But also, a number of times you would you would then... I mean, when I was with the kids, you know, many years later, yeah. you'd be driving around country pubs. Yes. And you'd get to a bar just because, you know, there was... For some reason, you'd have to drive there. And you'd get there yeah. at, like, five to two. Yeah. And then you'd oh, wait, shocking. For, wait for five minutes... Yeah, and by the time the guy came to speak to you, you'd yeah. say, you know, are you still doing lunch? No, mate, it's two o'clock. That's right. Yeah, you can't have lunch. Can't have you it. Know. Anyway, Absolutely ridiculous. Just to finish up on old Dick Bradsell, he worked at the Grouch Show, the Soho Brasserie. Do you know both of them? No. Uh, yes. Uh, six years as general manager at Fred's Club, which is another fashionable Don't Soho watering hole. Don't know that one. <laughs> and in each of them, he transformed the drinks list and left signature cocktails, as well as a new generation of mixologists yes. trained in his ex- exacting ways. Starting point with any aspiring bartender was to watch them make a gin and tonic. Yeah. I can tell if a person will ever make a bartender by watching them mix a gin and tonic. How mm. about that? Oh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. it's only relatively recently you can get a decent martini in this town. Well, exactly, yeah. I mean, that's totally another good. story altogether. Now, mm. coming up next, I hope you've girded your loins. Coming up on Thursday. Indeed. Uh, now, we might as well get straight down to it because we've got a load of uh, texts and, uh, okay. and uh, Facebook questions and yeah. Twitter questions. Here's yeah. one on Facebook uh, from Mazin. who says, I'm getting mixed messages from Porky about success in life. Shall I cheat like Benteke and win or be honest and become a loser? Well, I don't believe in cheating at all. Um, Benteke did cheat, and, I, and I've been very firm about that, and I've had some uh, very detailed conversations on all forms of social media with people. I believe he cheated because, although there was minimal uh, physical contact, it wasn't punitive contact. It wasn't uh, a foul, and therefore it shouldn't yeah, be a Yeah, but penalty. this is more a, p- a question about the contradiction yes. of, of sometimes what you've said in the past. No, there is about, no contradiction. About, you know, I do winning, not believe in cheating. All, you've talked about no, winning at all costs. No, what I'm saying is, uh, you, know my, uh, you know what my motive in life is if you're not winning it's because you're not trying hard enough yeah. okay i sincerely believe but in you've that you've also suggested using rat like cunning rat like cunning is not cheating rat like cunning is being smart than the average bear and okay. i believe in that what you've got to concentrate on is looking at the opportunity finding the best way to exploit the opportunity and being a little bit more clever than your fellow man that does not mean you've got to cheat i don't believe in cheating cheats are despicable people because they bend the rules of society okay perry says yeah, on Facebook, if you had a fire in your penthouse, what items would you try to save? Um, if I had a fire in my penthouse, I would want to save a lot of documentation stuff. For instance, my collection of football programmes, which largely consist of uh, Everton programmes, I would definitely save. I would definitely save my Rolex watch. I would definitely try to save uh, some football memorabilia, which I have on the walls, including maybe... Wayne Rooney's first England shirt. Well, the sounds of it, you'd be burning to death. No, by no, no, I wouldn't. No, I, w- I would definitely try to save things that are not replaceable, i.e. family mementos and that sort of thing. What I wouldn't want to save is the furniture, couldn't care less, the washing machine and all that. That can all be replaced. It would be the irreplaceables that I would have to save. And I would, you know, beg the firemen to put out flames in areas of the apartment where I want to do rescue stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure you can do that. Uh, mm. How about this one from Wayne on uh, uh, Facebook? Uh, throughout history, which world leader have you admired the most? The world leader I've admired the most throughout history is Winston Churchill. And that is because, without a shadow of a doubt, without his fortitude, without his strength, without his character, without his will to win, without his self-belief of a most enormous nature, we could very well have gone under at the, in the, uh, at the start of the Second World War. And you have to thank that man, really, for turning around the course of tyranny in the world. OK. Uh, hey, how about this one from uh, yes. um, Richard? Uh, so is, is, is it OK to drink a 125 bottle of champagne on a train at 9am but not lager? Uh, it's better to be drinking a bottle of 125 pound champagne on a train at 9am but not lager. If you'd started drinking lager at that time in the morning, you get terribly bloated and you'll find that you ruin your day because uh, you've got to pace your day towards drink input and food because you're going to need something to eat during the course of the day. Um, I would say anybody drinking lager at 9am in the morning is a lager lout and a person to be avoided, whereas anybody drinking a £125 bottle of champagne at 9am 
as long as they're in a first-class seat on a train, I say would be a rather sophisticated person. So that's acceptable, in other yes, words. Yes, Excellent yes. Excellent stuff. OK, how about this one from uh, 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 Sean? He says, Porky, is my bet looking good? I'm a fellow Evertonian and I've backed them at 12-1 to 1 to win the FA Cup. I've also backed Tottenham at 11-2 to 2 for the Premier League. Mm. Uh, as you're a fountain of knowledge, I need your expert opinion. Well, Sean from Wallasey. I hope very much that you've got your bet right on the FA Cup 12-1. to 1. I'm going up to Goodison on Saturday for that, going on the old train, actually, funnily enough, but won't be drinking champagne that early. Don't drink champagne, and train doesn't leave until later. Uh, I hope Everton win it, but it's going to be a tough game against Chelsea. As for Tottenham, I said about a month ago now that, listen, Tottenham need to put a run together and they can take the title. They did put a run together of six games, and then, for, unfortunately, the two games which are crucial, West Ham away, Arsenal at home, Excuse me, they dropped five points out of six. So, but I still think they're a good bet to win the Premier League. I think you've done all right there, and if you get the double, then uh, you'll be in the money, which is a good thing. And here's one from Becky who says, uh, "What's your views on International Women's Day? Should we have a day to celebrate women's brilliance and success?" Well, uh, yes, I'm very, very happy to uh, to endorse uh, International Women's Day. Is there an International Man's Day? I don't no, think there is. There is, and uh, and maybe that's because well, it, it can't be because there's more men in the world than women because uh, you know theoretically speaking, it's a it's a fifty fifty division. I'm not sure if it is fifty fifty actually. Well, whatever it is, I don't know if it's one. For, you know, I know it's fifty five forty five or something like that. I'm not sure. But uh, all I would say is that. Um, I'm very happy to for women to celebrate and National Women's Day. I'm very happy to support it. I just don't really altogether see the the full point of it, and I think it's rather patronising to women themselves to say, "Oh, look, you know, we need a, a Women's Day." I've just been of informed, by the way, there is a men's National Men's Day sometime in September. Okay, well, I wouldn't join November, into anything. Sorry. Like that, so uh, I, I'm not aware of that. All right, one from yeah. Tex. Porky, yeah. when was the last time someone hit you? <laughs> That's um, a good question. Yeah, it's it's quite a long time ago. Um, in fact, you know... It wasn't that uh, Rammy that you had with um, Frank LaBeouf <laughs> over me? in, uh, in uh, one of those Euro restaurants. Well, it was, it was. I was wrestling on the floor with two louts, two English soccer louts, who I had to throw out of a restaurant in uh, Germany with Frank LaBeouf. Uh, we were both dining in the same rather sophisticated restaurant when these yobbos came in and got rid of them. But it's probably more likely to have been a situation... I think it was actually one of our shows, actually, somebody, you know... Got... Somebody trying to punch you? Not punch me, necessarily, but we got into a bit of a mix, didn't we? Really? Yeah, you know, when after... Was the... that? After the show, when we're signing books and videos and all that kind of stuff. I don't remember anyone trying to punch you. No, they didn't try to punch me, but it was a load of pushing and shoving as we were trying to get through a door or something. And I think I took a blow to the face, but really? it was entirely accidental. I don't remember that. Mo- mo- most people do not want to assault me. Most people do not have that <laughs> feeling towards me. Most people. I wouldn't say that. Regard me as, a, you know, a. Uh, um, a good sort, a good egg, a good egg, I okay. would say, and don't want to hit me. Uh, here's one from uh, The Stig, who says, yeah. if the devil punishes bad people, why is he considered evil? If the devil what? Punishes pe- bad people, yes. why is he considered evil? Well, the the devil is the devil incarnate, and what that means is incarnate. He is the symbol of evil. So if he punishes evil people that are more evil than him, then you've got a right uh, hodgepodge of uh, situations there. All I would say is, uh, fear not the devil if uh, you believe in the Lord. <laughs> Sorry. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Just your explanation of the devil incarnate. Yeah. I thought that was somebody else who's the, who's the devil incarnate. No, no. Not actually the devil. No, it's only the one devil, devil. Yeah, but he's the devil. No, it's, it's only one the devil. devil incarnate. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. Anyway, we'll have to move on. Yeah. Uh, here's one from Paul. Uh, he says, I have the chance to move to Amsterdam to study for a year. Should I leave Leeds and go? I sure am our chauffeur. I understand. I understand. Right there. A little mouse. Uh, Amsterdam's a great uh, city, but it's not a big city, and I think you can do Amsterdam in about two or three days. Mm. Leeds, on the other hand, is one of our favourite cities in this country. It's a great northern city. It's got fantastic architecture, great town hall. It's a thriving, bustling city. Mm. Uh, If I had the choice of living in Amsterdam or Leeds, I'd live in Leeds. Would you? Yes, definitely. Here's one from Ian. Yes. Uh, I like to walk my dog Toffee, but after an hour, my hand gets sore and I can't hold on to the lead. Have you got any tips? Well, that's a really bizarre question because if you're taking your dog out walking, it's tiring you out. Don't take it out for so long. Uh, if, if the lead is, is uh, a nuisance lead, get a new lead. All I would say is I do get a little irritated with these people who have these leads where the lead just comes out longer oh, yeah, and longer. Like longer. 30 foot long lead. Yeah, we've got one of those. I don't use it. Yeah, it's rubbish. So I would say get a lead that's a get short a, lead. Get a decent lead. Get a decent and lead. And just hold on to it. Yeah, hold on to don't it. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. Keep your dog close to yeah. you and uh, don't walk for 
as yeah. long and uh, and get into the boozer and let your dog rest under the table while you have a few pints. OK. Yeah. Uh, here's one from Kirk. Who's the best manager out of King Kenny Rogers, Steve Sherwood and Milf McGuinness? Uh, it's a, that's a joke question. It's obvious. It's a real the, no, it's a real question, just well, with joke names. Well, it's 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 obvious, isn't it? Who the best uh, manager is there? It's got to be Kenny Dalglish because he won the double as player manager in his first season, went on to win uh, uh, other titles with Liverpool and and with another club, Blackburn Rovers. Yes. So it has to be Dalglish. Okay, thank you very much indeed. That's yes. all we've got time for. I'm yes. afraid uh, we've still got some left over. We'll try and uh, re- uh, revamp and revisit some of them if they're still relevant. Uh, but at the same time next week we'll be asked Porky. Thank you for all of your questions and sorry if you. Didn't get one read out. Yeah. Uh, coming up uh, next, we've got lots more to do. Uh, one birthday uh, message to give out as well. This is Talk Sport. All right. Inspire the next generation of young fans and celebrate the spirit of the game on Talk Sport with Barclays, championing the true spirit of the game. Listen throughout the day for the chance to win a pair of tickets to take a young fan to their very first Barclays Premier League match. Win an unforgettable experience that will last a lifetime. Play first games on Talk Sport with Barclays, championing the true spirit of the game. For full terms and conditions, go to talksport.com slash competitions. Pack more style into your life with the spacious new Mini Clubman. Six doors, seating for five, a flexible folding rear seat design, and enough boot space for your matching luggage. Or the complete record collection and retro chairs that just said, buy me. The stylishly spacious new Mini Clubman. Everything that makes you stand out fits right in. Book a test drive at your nearest Mini Centre or mini.co.uk slash space. Test drive is subject to status and availability. Even if you are driving high, you've got no reason to be pulled over, have you? It's not like the weed is affecting you. Anyway, you know these roads, and the police can't tell you're stoned, can they? It's not like your eyes are red or you're acting a bit strange. You'll be fine. Except if you get pulled over, the roadside swab will be able to tell that you've done drugs on the spot, leading to a criminal record, a minimum 12-month driving ban, and a large fine. Think. Don't take drugs and drive. Get a generous helping of the latest odds and tasty tips with Paddy's Punts every weekday afternoon from 4 on Drive with Durham and Goffey on Talk Sport with Paddy Power. You're welcome. With the form on the football. The what a game. The going on the GGs. And they're off. The crack on the cricket. Six. And lashings of Paddy's famous generosity. Ah, come on, gives a break to me a bit of crack, isn't it? Get your tips while they're hot with Paddy's Punts. Weekday afternoons from 4 with Adrian Durham and Darren Goff on Talk Sport with Paddy Power. You're welcome. Talk sport. Fedora, sheepskin coat, and the occasional cigar. Oh, my word! On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. Talk sport. We are the two mics. Uh, a couple of tweets and texts to read out yep. to you. Uh, here's one from Dylan, who says there are 50.4% men and 49.6% women on the planet. Is that right? I don't know how you could be quite so specific. No, but Surely anyway. it's a movable feast. I would have thought so, but, but thanks uh, for that anyway. But uh, but Dylan says that. But anyway, um, mm. uh, others are saying it's a 50-50 split. Phil yeah. says, uh, Ocean's 14 now have the checklist for valuables worth saving at Porky's Penthouse. Well done, Porky. H- who? For Ocean's 14. Well, is that the film? Well, there's Ocean's 11, right? Oh, yeah. And there's Ocean's 12. Yes. So he's suggesting Ocean's 14, which might be the next one. Where's Ocean's 13 gone? Well, 13 was there as well. I didn't think I needed to mention every oh, single one. Oh, no, number. I see. Yeah, right. Okay. Have you not seen any of those films either? Is it about robbing casinos? Well, one, a couple of... Yeah, they, yeah they're basically right. robbers, yeah. Yes, OK, yeah, yeah. I'm not into robbers and all that kind of stuff. I don't believe the glamorisation of crime and criminals. Really? No, it doesn't, uh, okay. it doesn't turn So you've never seen any of those films? No, I haven't really. Haven't you? No. Well, all I mean, aside from Top Gun, yeah. which you got completely wrong. Aren't they on the Pacific Coast Highway type uh, well, films? Well, they're mostly in Vegas, I think. In Vegas? Oh, OK, yeah, yeah, all you right. You should really try and watch some more films. Why? Because it would broaden your mind. Well, I've got other things to do. Like what? I mean, you've well, still failed, you. you've failed to kind of 
uh, quantify. If you were yeah. being quizzed in a police station, for mm. example, mm. and you were being asked to account for your whereabouts, yes. as they often do. Yes. I mean, so far you've failed miserably to account for your whereabouts, even for what you did yesterday. No, I haven't. All you've done is take us up to about lunchtime. Yeah. Um, and then there's a lot of sort of, you know, vague stuff about, well, oh, I did some paperwork. Yeah, well, I did. Until midnight. And, and remember, I have to watch a lot of television because tomorrow night it's Porky Vision. Well, yeah, but so, you're not known for watching a lot of television. I do, I do. I watch hours of it to bring myself right up to date, yeah. So what are you, what are you, what are you going to be talking about then? I'm going to be talking about, uh, <laughs> excuse me, the night right. manager, yeah. Shetland. Shetland, yeah. Uh, what not- about uh, that one that you like um, with the police uh, weirdo? Happy Valley. Happy Valley. Yeah, be talking about that, definitely. Ah, okay. So, Happy Valley, Shetland, the night manager, all, all good stuff on at the moment. Oh, Stag. 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 Didn't I talk about it no. last week? Yeah, Stag. No. Yeah, yeah. Really Ridiculous programme. Yes, it? yes. Right. I'll be telling you well, about don't that. Don't tell us about it yet. Yeah, okay. Don't I'll tell, tell you about it, it tomorrow. Oh, okay. Now, I've read one of these uh, motivational books again. Have you? If you focus on yourself and nothing else, mm. you're a loser. Yes, I think that's true. Is your ego. Well, you're also a narcissist. Is your ego too big or too small? That's the first question you have to ask yourself. I would say yours is too big. Do you worry that you aren't assertive enough or are you beginning to suspect that you thrust yourself forward too often? Are you asking me this? Yes. Um, no, I think I'm assertive enough, yes. Uh, do you talk about yourself so much that you alienate colleagues? No, I don't, but you do. Now, you see, this is, this is where you go wrong. So ego is defined as one sense of self-worth mm. or importance. Yes. Uh, subject of a new book by a guy called Stephen Sylvester. Is that it for the quiz? I was looking forward to some more questions. No, 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 no. Was there no more questions? No, no, I wanted you to compare your attitude to those three questions to mine. Right. Right? So the questions are, is your ego too big or too small? Well, I said, um, I don't think it's, it's... I think it's just right. I don't think it's big, too big or too small. I think it's the same for me. Yeah, but you're wrong about that, because no, yours I, is too big. No, I don't have an ego. I don't, have, don't an ego. have an ego. I don't have are an ego. Are you sure? I'm certain. Okay. Right? Are you beginning to suspect that you thrust yourself forward so often and talk about yourself so much you alienate colleagues? No. I certainly don't. No, I think you do. No, I don't. Yeah, I would say you do. Who do I alienate? You alienate everybody. No, rubbish. You do. You well, always no, I alienated don't. people. No, I don't. That's been your part of your charm. I don't. Part of your charm. Why are you shouting? Because you are trying to tar me as some sort of, <laughs> uh, you know, like um, a control freak type person. No, not at all. Which I'm is just mad. giving you my answers. Right. Do you alienate colleagues, friends and perhaps even family? Uh, do I? Yeah. Certainly not. And I don't either. Don't you? No. Okay. And, and, uh, Are you and, sure? And, I'm certain. I'm certain. Are you sure? Look back sure. at your career, right? What? In Fleet Street. Mm. Do you don't think you alienated people? And of course not. No, I was, of course I was not. assertive in command because I was right. in charge. Okay. Simple as that. Now right. then, one argument is that inflated egos are getting in the way of our objectives. People who compete to bolster their sense of self-worth, who narrowly focus on their own interests, experience more stress, failure and frustration than those who are not as ambitious. Right. Well, you see, surely uh, this guy's making a classic error. And what he's basically yeah. making out is, uh, is that if you are ambitious, you must have an ego, yeah. which is which is partially true. Mm. But that's not the simple uh, solution to the, to the whole story, is it? However... I mean, if, you, if you have to believe in yourself in order to be ambitious, yes. you have to believe that you can do things in order to take them on, but that doesn't necessarily make, make it an unhealthy situation. Right. It also says here... What do you mean, Right. Yeah, I've listened to what you yeah, said. but you have no comment on what I said. Well, I'm going to read the expert view well, to you. Well, why don't you tell me your view? Well, I'm going to read the expert view. All right. Uh, stress can be reduced and our talents liberated if we work towards bigger ideals uh-huh. such as family, country or moral purpose. <laughs> I agree with that. Really? When... So how are you working towards any of those three things? Hang on, hang on. When we think about me, 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 mm. we tend to get nervous, we worry about what could go wrong... Yeah. But when we play for others, then the focus is outwards rather than inwards yep. and we become more creative true. and more effective as a human being. That's very true. How about that? Yeah, I think that's very true. How about that? Yeah. But, I mean, it's pretty obvious stuff, isn't it? It's not, no, exactly, it's no. not exactly, you know, uh, Psychiatry 101, is it? Why, why does this guy say, when we think about me, 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 we hmm. tend to get nervous and to worry about what could go wrong? Because I think what he's saying is, is that if all you're <laughs> doing agree is, with is focusing on yourself, yeah. then you're not seeing the big picture. But if you're you... worrying about whether something you're doing is right yeah. or, whether, or whether it's wrong, when in fact you might be, you know, you know, really not necessarily having to do that because other people yes. are not seeing it that way. If you don't focus on yourself, then you're a loser. If you think well, that, this you guy know, says that. That's the opposite of, of, of what you are. Yeah, well, I don't know. This this guy may be an expert in losing rather than in winning. <laughs> if you see what I mean? Because that's what it looks sounds like to me. No, I think he's right. No, I don't think he's right. I think. I, yeah, I but think that's this... because he's describing you, and you don't like that. What? He's describing you. 
No, he no, is. no. I think your answers to those questions would be the complete opposite of mine. Uh, you know, this guy, by the way, this guy called Sylvester. Yeah. Uh, is that his first name or his last name? Uh, Stephen Sylvester, former right. cricketer turned psychologist, right? He's he, he, This guy is a loser. It's all based on his losing instincts. <coughs> losing? Says, yeah, it says... Uh, interest in psychology, Sylvester's interest in psychology came from his experience of playing county cricket in the 1990s. His form was never consistent. He struggled with nerves. He belatedly realised he was putting too much pressure on himself because he wanted to be the main yeah. man. So he's talking for experience. Only when he learned to turn his focus away from his ego did he discover a deeper joy in the game. This is all rubbish. Well, you're the one that started That's a manual for losers, that is. Well, you're the one that started giving the guy publicity for manual no Manual for losers. Reason. OK. Don't read it. Manuel for losers. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, at one o'clock, they miss your parry and uh, Porky Vision uh, should be a belter, I'm sure. We've got Champions League as well, of course, coming up. We've got Chelsea Champions against, League uh, coming up. Paris Saint-Germain, which we haven't really talked about. Paris Saint-Germain. Do, uh, do you think they're going to get through, Chelsea? Uh, it's a bit tricky, isn't it? I think yeah. tricky is definitely the word. John Terry's I think, not I think they're very capable of it. I've got a vested interest in how Chelsea do tomorrow night because Everton are playing them on Saturday in the quarter-final of the FA Cup. That's right, yeah. I would like you're Chelsea, going up there. T- yes, I am, yeah. I'd like Chelsea to arrive at Goodison Park demoralised. Yes. And I'm not sure... Well, are you sure? I mean, because sometimes yeah. you prefer the other way around, wouldn't well, you? Because, I mean, yeah, sometimes, sometimes if they're demoralised, they're a bit more dangerous, like a wounded animal. I totally agree. It's difficult to work that one out. But mm. uh, what I don't want is... Um, I don't want Chelsea coming there on the back of a 3-0 victory because they will be full, literally full of... Uh, of uh, self-belief. Yeah, but if they get knocked out of the Champions League, then the yeah. FA Cup's about anything left for them, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is. I totally agree. But the, but then again, you, you, you're looking at a, you know a, a team which have been have suffered a, a bruising and a battering and a, and, and a downer. Mm. Any team that goes to Goodison after winning three 0 tomorrow and going through into the next round of the Champions League is going to be absolutely on a high. Yeah, and I don't want them on a high. Mm. I'm sorry, it's a completely selfish point of view. I don't think anyone would begrudge you having a selfish point of view no, about that. No, but you're exactly. also going to be. Tra- Travelling with a Chelsea fan, aren't you? So, I mean, you also they wouldn't want yes. him to be miserable about the trip, perhaps. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, remember, we won't know the result of the game we're going to until we come back. So, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking what? about the result of the game uh, that, that's tomorrow taking night. place tomorrow night. Yes, tonight, rather. Tonight. Tonight, yeah, yeah. What about it? Well, I mean, if they lose and they're out of the Champions League, yes. then your, your companion, yes. who's a Chelsea fan, mm. will be miserable, will he? I couldn't care less about him. You couldn't care less? No. Well, you're spending hours with him. Yeah, well, that's all right, because he's, we're going to the game together. But, yeah. you know, I, I don't care for his uh, sensibilities about Chelsea going out of the Champions League. That seems not callous. That no, seems it's not. It's trifle, not callous at all. It's callous. not callous at all. Mm. And, in fact, you know, if he raises a murmur of... Uh, of support for Chelsea in a manner which I find offensive or aggressive, yeah. uh, he's, you'll, get, you'll get treatment. Not like the way that you did at Bournemouth, when uh, you were saying 1-0 to the Everton yes. uh, in a stand full of Bournemouth directors. Well, I wasn't really. Well, you were singing it. I mean, nobody no. was complaining about no. it. No, you know. all I said was to you, 1-0 yeah, yeah. to the Everton. Yeah. That was all. That was I know. All. It was yeah. quiet. It was quite quiet. It was aggressive. Yeah. I'm no. not saying it was aggressive. No, I'm people just loved that... us in Bournemouth. We've got the pictures to prove it. Yeah, That's we have. okay. That's, that's absolutely no problem at all. In fact, I'm going into a new lounge at uh, Goodison on no, Saturday. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. report back. Yes, indeed. You can report back on all I will. Uh, new money pouring I'll send you some pictures, OK? Yeah, do that. He complained. I don't send you any pictures. Exactly. I'll send you some pictures, right? Take some more pictures. Yeah. I think you should. Yeah. Excellent. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> we are the two mics. Look at the light! Don't forget to come back tomorrow for another sparkling, as fizzy as a bottle of champagne, podcast from the two mics. It's like taking your flash drive mm. and putting it inside an electromagnet. Mm. You know what happens to your flash drive? No. He doesn't even know what a flash drive is, Paul. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> your little <laughs> stick that you stick in your computer. For exactly. Memory. I do know what that is, Paul. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> and what would happen to that? <laughs> creatine. You know what creatine is? Creatine. Creatine. No. Creatine. Creatone. Creatone. Creatone or creatine? Creatine. 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 It's creatine, <laughs> right? If you love the Two Mics podcast, you'll love the live show. Weekday overnights from 1am on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM and via the TalkSport app. TalkSport, your Premier League station with exclusive commentaries every weekend. What an absolute corker. TalkSport. I discovered, right... Mm. Who invented the dishwasher?